Church Titus, we want to welcome you to this funeral service. This morning as we begin to prepare, I want to invite anyone who is part of the service to please make your way over to my left up here to take the seats that has been arranged for you to sit. So if you're speaking, doing anything at all today, please make sure that you are sitting up here with us. Isaiah chapter 40, comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly and proclaim to her that her heart service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand. This morning, as we get ready to start the service, I want to take a moment to welcome all those who are here and those who are joining us by a live stream and say to you to be here with a prayerful attitude. At this time, I'd like to invite for opening prayer, Pastor Thomas Ruggies. Let us close our eyes and pray unto the Lord for his close comfort on our life. Precious Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for the moment that you provided us to come before you. Things that happen in our life, sometimes we cannot even fathom, but you are a God still in control. Last night, we heard from your word that you are still in that throne when all of these things are happening. Even though it's hurting, even though it's sorrowful to our life, the closest and immediate families are sorrowing. But in the midst of all of the things, we could look up to you, we could come closer to your throne and receive mercy and grace from you. This morning, as family and friends, as we come together for the last home going of our brother, Benji, this morning, we put all our heart into you, Lord. The eternal God, every comfort comes from you. We are asking you to be with us this morning. Your Holy Spirit, console us. Be with us, O God. This is the times of mourning, but the Bible says you turn our mourning into joy. This morning we are asking you to be with us and bless us every time we spend, every song, every message, every word we speak here. Let it be acceptable for you, a sweet aroma in your presence, O oh Lord. When these things happen, like Psalmist David says, Lord, make me know my end and the measure of my day so that I may know how frail I am. For it be soon cut off and we will fly away. We are all in the line of flying away one day, O oh God. That we, are a hope, we have a hope that you are up here in the clouds that we are all, hallelujah, collected. Whether we live, live early or we are staying here, we will be all collected to the eternal home. We thank you for this time. Bless the service of God until up everything is finished. Thank you for being with us. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Let's be prepared to worship with our Malayalam team this morning. I'd like for you to take a moment to silence your cell phones. Please put it in do not disturb, just out of um, reverence for the Lord and uh, just honoring the family. And so please silence your cell phones. Here's our Malayalam worship team.
Matthew, I serve as the lead pastor of the Levittown Church of God in Pennsylvania, and on behalf of my wife, Chesley, and the church, we want to extend our condolences to the family. We welcome you all to this gathering of the celebration of the life of our dear Ben. Those of you watching us virtually from various parts of this country, as well as in India and other nations, on behalf of the family, we want to say welcome. Thank you for your presence, Bina, Jordan, and the entire family feels your support as they journey through this grief, most difficult season of their lives. 
as you are seated here, even after this service and as the days pass, may I ask for you to continue to pray for Bina and Jordan, for the Lord to cover them under his wings, to embrace them with his everlasting arms. Please also remember Benji's parents, Pastor KP Titus, Remini Ante, Brother Verghese, and Sister Sharon. Moreover, please remember Bina's parents, Pastor Daniel K. George, Rachel Ante, her siblings, Betsy and Bensi, Bensi's wife, Justina, and their children, Zane and Samara. To all the servants of God gathered here, thank you. Please be in prayer for the service along with us this morning. Dear Bina and Jordan, we are gathered here to support you. We're here to show you that we love you both dearly and remind you that you are not alone. You're not alone because Jesus is also walking with you and will continue to do so as you are his children. One of the hallmarks of the Christian faith is that every person who experiences rebirth knows that we worship a God who is sympathizing and empathizing with his children. God in the Garden of Eden did not eradicate his relationship with his children, even after their sin, knowing that it directly influenced creation and all of the human race following them. But he loved them. He loved them enough to cover their nakedness and he, as he sent them out of the garden. Even as sin multiplied on earth, God showed his sympathy to his people and called men and women such as Noah, Abraham, Moses, Ruth, Samuel, David, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Daniel, Esther, and so many more down the centuries. He sympathized with their sin, giving them law and the prophets. In the fullness of time, God sympathized with all those who followed. In holy conception, he came into this world through his son, Jesus Christ, taking the form of a man born under the law, walked the streets of Jerusalem full of grace and truth. He came and shed his blood to pay for the penalty of yours and my sins, to satisfy the wrath of God against each and every one of us. Once and for all, those who place their trust in him shall have life through his son, Jesus Christ. This is glorious. Not only now, but the one that is ahead of us and the one that Ben has entered. In John chapter 14, Jesus declared the words, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God and believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. So, Bina, this Jesus today, here and now, sympathizes and empathizes with you. How do I know this for sure? The scripture tells us in John, seeing the grief of Martha and Mary, the shortest yet the resounding voice of Jesus with no words. The Bible declares that Jesus wept. It's okay to weep. Tears are a sign that your devotion to your dear one, your beloved husband and dear dad. This morning, I want to say thank you for the joy of celebrating his life along with you. As we get prepared for this service, let us continue to be in a prayerful attitude. And all those who are serving in the service today, please take your seats up in the front. I want to invite at this time for scripture reading, Pastor Raghis Matthew. 
as Pastor Verghese Matthew makes his way, may invite the following to come and take your seats. Jacob Matthew, who will share words of reflection. Pastor Pius Matthew, Pastor Kyle Embry, and Pastor Sam John. Here's Pastor Verghese Matthew. Praise the Lord. Greetings to you all in the name of our precious Lord Jesus Christ. For the scripture reading, let's all stand together in the presence of God towards the reverence of the word of God. Reading from the Psalms. 90. Kartave ni talamura talamurayai nyangada sangeda maayirikinu. Parvodangal undayidinam. Ni bhoomi em bhoomandalate em narmichidinam mumbay. Ni anadiyayim shashidamayim deyumagnu. Ni martine podileke tirige madangiche irimaraknu. Manishivutranare tirige varivi nenum arali cheyinu. Ayiram samvarsaram nindadrushil innale karinu boye divasam boleim. Ratrile uriyamam boleim matra mirikinu. Ni avare voliki kalayinu. Avar orakam boleyatre. Our Ravile, Molochivarina, Pulubole Agunu, other Ravile Tarichi Valarinu, Waignera Mother, Irene Wadi Pogunu, Nyangan Nenda Kobatal, Shaichim, Nenda Krodatal, Promichim Pogunu, Ninyanga de Agro Tingle, Nenda Mumbilim, Nyanga de Sibangle, Nenda Moga Pragasitim Vichirikinu, Nyanga de Nalgolo came, Nenda Krodatil Karinibui, Nyanga de Samuel Srangle, Nyangalur in Nedur Pubole, Karikinu. Nyangade Aishkala Medibada Samuel Serum, Ere Ayal, N Buddha Samuel Serum, Adinda Pradabam, Prayasum, Dukav Matre, Aduveg and Dirigim, Nyangal Paranabogim Cheyinu, Nenda Kobatende Shakti Aim, Nenda Bai Paduan Dakonam, Nenda Krodha Taim Grehikinan Ar, Nyangal Nyana Muluru Hadeim Prabikita Kornam, Nyangal Nalagala Enduan, Nyangal Ubade Sikaname. Ehove, Madangi Varename, Yetra Tolan, Thomasum, Adding Loda, Sahadavan Don Enemy, Kala to the Ne, Nyangal in the Day under Truptan Mara Kaname, Enal Nyangade Aish Kalamukim, Nyangal Gold Shicha, Anandikim, Ninyangala Clay Sipicha, Diva Sangakum, Nyangalana Tamanibuicha, Samal Sangakum, Takavana Nyangale, Sando Shipikaname, Ninda Dasan Marker, Ninda Provertim, Avada Makaka, Ninda Mahutum, Velipedum Haragate, Nyangada de Umai, who will the Prasadam, Nyangada me Lirikim Haragate, Nyangade, Kaigalde, Proverty, Sadimaki Taraname, Ade, Nyangada Kaigalda Proverty, Sadimaki Taraname, Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's get seated. Praise the Lord. You know, the Psalms we read, it talks about the first, you know, it is one of the first Psalms that has been written. You know, he lived, Moses, the prayerful man, and uh, the subheading says that the prayer of Moses. He was a man of prayer standing in the gap between the people and God and always advocating for the people to God. And uh, as he was writing these Psalms, we know that his brother died and not only because of that uh, instant grief or instant uh, uh, that message that came out, he was, uh, rather than he was giving a whole life message towards the people of God, how to live a life uh, well lived in the presence of God. I'm not going to uh, take much time, but I am just wanted to reflect on something. And it says that God is eternal. He was giving a message to the children of God that he learned through his experience of wandering through the wilderness. And uh, he learned a lot of life messages. That is, one is God is eternal. Man's life is temporal, and man's origin is humble, and man's life, uh, lifespan is brief, and man's death is swift. God's judgment is always just, and the prayer is essential for anybody during the time of trouble, during the time of joy, during the time of 
all times you know regardless of uh, grief regardless of troubles regardless of any vital times it is needed the prayer is essential my acquaintance with uh, ben or the suresh you know it is rather very formal to call him suresh we call him benji and when i took the ch uh, when i took, uh, come into the uh, ministry of the new york bible assemblies of god in 2010 and that time onwards you know benji was very close to us and rather than uh, you know a formal person but he was speaking from heart to heart and um, you know a couple of times we met together and he came and ministered in our church for a couple of times and um, last time when he was having the back problem i came and visited his new house and it was a time of uh, great fellowship and uh, we had a quality time and i was just going through my cell phone to see what was the last message benji sent me it was a picture with the president of united states and the vice president of united states in the when he visited white house and um, today i'm sure that he is with the greatest president of all time and uh, who is ordaining the presidents of this world and giving uh, the orders of greatest or the highest priority and he is with our living god praise the lord and today i can assure you that many people were pray, praying for benji's life and um, over here but the prayers were answered differently i won't say that that prayers are uh, in vain but i will say that prayers were answered in a different manner I'm sure that it will be a life deposit for the family over here. But I can assure you that God is always just. God is always powerful. His decrees are powerful. And today we can look unto the word of God and see the comfort it is offering for us. And I have some of the condolences, my family's condolences and um, prayers of and um, and hope to towards this family and um, also pastor td babu from kerala he is sending his condolences shaji jacob who is unable to be here at this moment and he is in kerala he sends his uh, condolences saji matthew and pa pastor vargis john babu chayan from new york he sends his condolences and um, also, the believers of um, our church, New York Bible Assemblies of God, sends their condolences who are unable to be here at this time. And also, Reggie Matthew from Dallas, who is a former member of IPA, he couldn't be here at this time. He is uh, traveling at this moment. And um, also, different prayer line from the Boston 24-hour uh, prayer line, they sends their condolences and also uh, the different prayer lines in new york area they were earnestly praying for the uh, the the sustaining of the uh, you know uh, of benji's life in this world but i'm sure that god is going to take care of the family bina jordan you are in the safe hands of god you are surrounded by the families and the care of the almighty and we can assure you that and at this time, and God is good, and, uh, and, uh, and always, you know, when we have a troubled time or we have a need, and God says, God's word says that he is the father of the fatherless, and he will be there. And at my, uh, you know, two year, when I was two years old, I lost my father, and um, God has been so good to me. And looking back, I can say that Heavenly Father is the greatest Father who can uh, cover you with uh, all the needs of your life. Let me conclude this. May God bless you. Thank you.
Thank you, Pastor. Let's have a word of reflection from Brother Jacob Matthew. Do you want to FaceTime me now to say goodbye to Ben? That was a text message for Geese that sent me on Sunday night, which uh, just sent me into a complete shock. You see, 48 hours before that, Judy and I flew down to Dallas when we heard he was in the ICU. And I didn't fly down uh, thinking he was going to pass away, but just because I wanted him to hear my voice and encourage him and be there for him like he's always there, been, uh, been there for me. A week later, I am still in shock and just disbelief. I can't comprehend why a beautiful soul like Ben would be taken away, why his life would be cut so short. But I will say that even though his flame was snuffed out way too soon, his light did shine so brightly, and he touched so many people's lives in the short time he was here. How to describe the relationship I have with Ben, that, that's a tough one. Saying he was my little brother and, and best friend doesn't do it justice. We were much, much more than that. Um, I've known Ben since he was a baby, and our friendship and love for each other grew stronger and stronger the older we got. Neither time or distance weakened the bond we had one bit. Benji, Varghese, Bobby, a friend of ours, and I, we were inseparable. We were the four musketeers, the goonies, the standby me kids, and yes, even a little bit of the wedding crashers. We had so many adventures together that we could write a book, but one constant through all those adventures was the love for each other. And Ben had the biggest heart of all of us. He's always there with his smile, that wonderful smile you see up there, and he was there to be a brother for each one of us. I have so many wonderful memories of Ben uh, that showed who he is as a man, a father, a son, and a husband. I just wanted to share one particular memory of Ben so you can truly understand who he was. And that memory is the last conversation I had with Ben. In our conversation, Ben talked about his sickness and the physical pain he endured, but he never dwelled on it. He appreciated what he had, and he was just thankful of the, what he had in life. And every other sentence was, I thank God. So the first thing you should know about Ben is how positive he was about life. Nothing can get him down. With his thankful heart and heart for God, he just had an amazing positive outlook on life. We then talked about Judy. My wife came to Dallas a few weeks ago to visit family, and even with his sickness and being so hard for him to walk, even then, Ben took her everywhere, drove her everywhere, and cared for her like his own sister. So the next thing you need to know about Ben is, that if you're lucky to be his friend, his heart and love knows no bounds. He would drop everything for you and shower you with his love. And then we talked about Bina. Bina, let me tell you how thankful he was for you. He was so thankful, especially for you taking care of him and Jordan. <clears throat> he loved you so much. You were his rock and strength, and he told me in that conversation that he couldn't have gone through this, any of this, without your love and support. And finally, <clears throat> we talked about Jordan. And even though I couldn't see his face directly, I could almost see his light up, eyes light up as he talked about her. It was Jordan this, Jordan that. He could talk on and on about her. Jordan, he was so very proud of you, and you meant everything to him. Even though he's not here in person, I know he will always be watching over you. <clears throat> and for all your special events, whether it's the prom, graduation, or wedding, he will be there. And knowing Ben, no matter what he is doing in heaven, he will push people aside in heaven and stop everything he's doing and saying, my Jordan needs me. To Pastor Titus, Remini Andy, Rosie, Verghese, Bina, and Jordan, on behalf of Judy, Michael, and Peter, know that your loss is our loss, and your grief is our grief. And Verghese, thank you for sharing Ben's love with me. I've lost my brother, and the pain is just too much to bear. Ben, I love you, and you'll always be in my heart forever. <clears throat> thank you.
My name is Kyle. I am one of the pastors at Freedom Church, just right down the street in Carrollton, Texas. On, uh, on behalf of Kindle and Starla Bridges, Bina, we, uh, they send their love and condolences to you as they couldn't be here today. Life is a gift. It's given to us for passion and play. It's given to us to worship and to glorify God and do our very best. But James chapter 4 says that life is a vapor, as we've already heard. It comes and it goes so quickly. Ben Titus's life was gone too quickly. But we do know that Ben Titus was everything right about living. He was everything right about being a man of God, a man of prayer, a husband, a father, someone who passionately gave his heart and life to everything that he had. Ben Titus was everything that is right. I did not personally get to know or experience Ben Titus the way many of you did, the way many of you have, but I could see that Ben was everything that was right. We as a church family, we as Freedom Church, we stand beside Bina, we stand beside you, Jordan, and we say we are with you, praying, worshiping, supporting you in every way we can, and yet it's also a great crowd of witnesses and a great family that's here to support you as well. And even though Ben is gone today, we can echo the words that are found and believe in the words that are found in Psalms 27 that David said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? He then concludes that Psalm in verse 14 by saying, wait for the Lord. Be strong, let your heart take courage, and wait for the Lord. May the God of peace comfort and guide you, and may the God of love and blessing follow you. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. നല്ല പ്രഭാതത്തിനായ ദൈവത്തെ സ്തുതിക്കുന്നു മഹത്വപ്പെടുത്തുന്നു ഇങ്ങനെയൊരു സാഹചര്യം എൻ്റെ ജീവിതത്തിൽ ഞാൻ പ്രതീക്ഷിച്ചതല്ല എന്നാൽ കഴിഞ്ഞ ഞായറാഴ്ച രാത്രിയിലും ഞങ്ങൾ നമ്മൾ ബഹുമാനപ്പെട്ട ടൈറ്റസ് പാർഷ വിളിച്ചപ്പോൾ ഇങ്ങനെ പറഞ്ഞു പി എസ് മാതി പാർഷെ ബെഞ്ച് നമ്മളെ വിട്ട് പോവുകയാണെന്ന് പറഞ്ഞപ്പോൾ ഹൃദയത്തിന് വലിയ താങ്ങാൻ പറ്റാത്തൊരു ഭാരമായി തീരുവാനിടയായി തീർന്നു തിങ്കളാഴ്ച രാവിലെ ആ ദുഃഖവാർത്ത അറിഞ്ഞപ്പോൾ അതിനെക്കാട്ടി പ്രയാസമായി തീർന്നു എനിക്ക് തന്ന ടൈമിനുള്ളിൽ തന്നെ ഞാൻ ഇരിക്കുവാൻ ആഗ്രഹിക്കുന്നു വേർപാടിൻ്റെ ദുഃഖമെന്ന് പറഞ്ഞു കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ അത് അനുഭവിച്ച് അറിഞ്ഞവർക്കേ അറിയത്തുള്ളൂ നിങ്ങൾക്കറിയാം ചില ആഴ്ചകൾക്ക് മുമ്പ് ചില മാസങ്ങൾ അധികം മാസങ്ങളായില്ല എൻ്റെ മൂത്ത സഹോദരൻ ഡോക്ടർ പി എസ് ഫിലിപ്പിൻ്റെ ആ മേദ്യോഗം നിങ്ങൾ അറിഞ്ഞു കാണും ഞങ്ങൾ ഹോസ്പിറ്റലിൻ്റെ വാതക്കൽ നിൽക്കുമ്പോഴും ആ ദൈവദാസൻ അങ്ങനെ പെട്ടെന്ന് മാറ്റം ഞങ്ങളുടെ അച്ചാച്ചൻ പെട്ടെന്ന് മാറ്റപ്പെടുമെന്ന് ഞങ്ങൾക്ക് ചിന്തയില്ലായിരുന്നു അന്നേരം ഉണ്ടായ വേദനകൾ പറഞ്ഞറിയിക്കാൻ പറ്റാത്തതാണ് പലരും ചോദിക്കാറുണ്ട് ആശംസ അല്ല അനുശോചനം പറയുമ്പോൾ പറയാറുണ്ട് ഇതൊക്കെ ലോക സഹജമാണ് കുഴപ്പമൊന്നുമില്ല ദൈവം ആശ്വസിപ്പിക്കും പ്രിയപ്പെട്ടവരെ അവരവരുടെ ജീവിതത്തിൽ ആ വേദന വരുമ്പോൾ മാത്രമേ അതിൻ്റെ ദുഃഖം എത്രത്തോളം ഉണ്ടെന്ന് അറിയത്തുള്ളൂ കർത്താവ് ദാസൻ ടൈറ്റസ് ഫോർട്ട് രമണി ആൻഡി കുച്ചുവേവി റോസി പ്രിയ ബീന സിസ്റ്റർ ജോർദാൻ അവരുടെ പിതാക്കന്മാർ മാതാക്കൾ ബന്ധുമിത്രാദികളെ ആമേ ഈ ലോക ജീവിതത്തിൽ ഒരു ചിറകറ്റുപോയെങ്കിലും ആമേ അനുമനാഥിൻ്റെ ചിറകിൻ്റെ നീരിൽ ദൈവങ്ങളെ സൂക്ഷിപ്പാൻ ശക്തനാണ് മുപ്പത്തി ഒമ്പതാം സങ്കീർത്തനത്തിൻ്റെ നാലാം വാക്യം ഇങ്ങനെ ഒരു ചോദ്യമുണ്ട് അതിൻ്റെ മറുപടി നമ്മളോട് പറഞ്ഞിരുന്നെങ്കിൽ നമ്മൾ എന്നേ മരിച്ചു പോയേനെയും ചോദിക്കുന്നൊരു ചോദ്യമുണ്ട് യഹോവ എൻ്റെ അവസാനത്തെയും എൻ്റെ ആയുസ് എത്ര എന്നതിനെയും എന്നെ ഒന്ന് അറിയിക്കണമേ ഞാൻ എത്ര ക്ഷണികനൊന്ന് അറിയുമാറാകട്ടെ ചാഞ്ഞു പോകുന്ന നിഴൽ പോലെയാണ് പ്രിയപ്പെട്ടവരെ ഇന്ന് പകൽക്കാലം ഞാൻ മാതൃഭാഷയിൽ തന്നെയാണ് സംസാരിക്കുന്നത് ഇവിടെ ഇരിക്കുന്ന കൂടിയിരിക്കുന്ന അനവധി വ്യക്തി ജീവിതങ്ങൾ നമ്മുടെ കേരളക്കരയിൽ നിന്ന് വന്നിട്ടുള്ളവരാണല്ലോ എന്നാൽ ഇന്ന് പകൽക്കാലം നമ്മൾ ഒരു ചിന്തയിലായിരിക്കണം എന്നാൽ എൻ്റെ ആവിധി ചോദിക്കുന്ന ഒരു ചോദ്യമുണ്ട് എൻ്റെ അവസാനത്തെയും എൻ്റെ നാളുകൾ എത്ര എന്നതിനെ എന്നെ ഒന്ന് അറിയിക്കണമേ ഇന്ന് നമ്മളോടത് പറഞ്ഞിരുന്നെങ്കിൽ ഇന്ന് രാത്രി നമ്മൾ വീട്ടിൽ പോകത്തില്ല അതിനുമ്പ് മരിച്ചേ എന്നാൽ ഒരു പ്രതീക്ഷ പറയട്ടെ 
ആമയെ കർത്താവിൽ പ്രത്യാശ വെച്ചിരിക്കുന്ന പ്രത്യേകത്തെ ഒളിച്ചു പറയുന്നു ദൈവത്തിൽ പ്രത്യാശ വെക്കാം പ്രിയ ടൈറ്റസ് ഭാഷയും രമണീയ ആൻറ്റിയും കുടുക്ക സഹോദരങ്ങളെയും ദൈവം ആശ്വസിപ്പിക്കട്ടെ എനിക്കറിയാം ഞങ്ങളുടെ സഹോദരൻ എൻ്റെ സഹോദരൻ ഞങ്ങളുടെ അച്ചാച്ച ഞങ്ങളെ വിട്ടു പോയ എൻ്റെ വേദന ഇപ്പോഴും മാറിയിട്ടില്ല ഞാനധികം സമയം ദീർഘിപ്പിക്കുന്നില്ല ചില കൺട്രോളേഴ്സ് മാത്രം പറഞ്ഞിരിക്കുവാൻ ആഗ്രഹിക്കുന്നു ആമയെ ഡോക്ടർ പി എസ് ഫിലിപ്പിൻ്റെ സഹധർമ്മിണി അല്ലെ എൻ്റെ മൂത്ത ജ്യേഷ്ഠതി ലീലാമ്മ ഫിലിപ്പ് അബുദാബിയിൽ നിന്ന് വിളിച്ചിരുന്നു പ്രത്യേക ലീലാമ്മയുടെയും കുടുംബാംഗങ്ങളുടെയും എല്ലാ പ്രത്യാശയും ദുഃഖവും അറിയിക്കണം എന്ന് അറിയിച്ചിട്ടുണ്ട് ന്യൂയോർക്ക് ബൈബിൾ ഏജ് ചർച്ചിലെ എല്ലാ വിശ്വാസികളുടെയും എൻ്റെ വൈഫ് ഗ്രേസി ജോവാശ് അവിടെ ആയിരിക്കുന്നു എൻ്റെ രണ്ട് മക്കൾ ഖത്തറിലും ദുബൈയിലുമായിരിക്കുന്നു അവരുടെ കൺട്രോൾസസ് അറിയിക്കുന്നു പൊനലൂർ ഓഫീസിൽ നിന്ന് ടോം വിളിച്ചിരുന്നു പ്രത്യേക ആമയെ കൺട്രോൾസ് അറിയിക്കണമെന്ന് പറഞ്ഞിരുന്നു ബദൽ ബൈബിൾ കോളേജിൽ നിന്ന് വൈസ് പ്രിൻസിപ്പാൾ ഡി മാത്യു സാർ എന്നെ വിളിച്ചിരുന്നു പ്രത്യേക കുടുംബത്തോടുള്ള ബന്ധത്തിൽ കൺട്രോൾസസ് അറിയിക്കാൻ പറഞ്ഞിട്ടുണ്ട് ന്യൂയോർക്ക് സിറ്റി വൈഡ് പ്രയർ ഫെലോഷിപ്പിൽ പാർഷ കെ എബ്രഹാം ആമയെ പ്രത്യേക കൺട്രോൾസ് അറിയിക്കാൻ പറഞ്ഞിട്ടുണ്ട് അമ്മയെ മധ്യമേഖല ഡയറക്ടർ കേരളക്കരയിൽ നിന്ന് വി വൈ ജോസ് കുട്ടി പാസ്റ്റർ കഴിഞ്ഞ ദിവസം വിളിച്ചിരുന്നു അമ്മയെ ആ സഭയും മധോഞ്ഞാൽ സഭയുടെയും കുടുംബാംഗങ്ങളുടെയും തൻ്റെ ദാസിൻ്റെയും കൺട്രോൾസ് അറിയിക്കാൻ പറഞ്ഞിട്ടുണ്ട് ജെയിംസ് മാത്യു വിളിച്ചിരുന്നു പുറയിലും ഒരേ ജി ടൈബിൽ സഭയുടെ ശുശ്രൂഷകൻ എല്ലാവരുടെയും പ്രത്യാശ അറിയിക്കുന്നു സർവശക്തനായ ദൈവം നിങ്ങളെ എനിക്കും അത് മാത്രമേ പറയാനുള്ളൂ ദൈവം നിങ്ങളെ ആശ്വസിപ്പിക്കട്ടെ പ്രിയ സിസ്റ്റർ ബീന മകൾ കുടുംബാംഗങ്ങൾ ടെറസ് വാഷ് കുടുംബങ്ങളെ ദൈവം നിങ്ങളെ ആശ്വസിപ്പിക്കട്ടെ ന്യൂയോർക്കിലായിരിക്കുന്ന എല്ലാ പ്രിയപ്പെട്ടവരുടെയും ഞങ്ങളുടെ കുടുംബങ്ങളുടെ അമ്മ പ്രത്യാശയും ദുഃഖവും അറിയിക്കുന്നു അവസരം വേർതിരിച്ചെന്ന ദൈവം മക്കൾക്ക് നന്ദി അറിയിക്കുന്നു പ്രൈസലോ ഞാനും മാതൃഭാഷയിൽ സംസാരിക്കുന്നു നാട്ടിൽ നിന്ന് ഞങ്ങളുടെ കുടുംബാംഗങ്ങൾ ഈ ലൈവ് വാച്ച് ചെയ്തുകൊണ്ടിരിക്കുന്നതുകൊണ്ട് മലയാളത്തിൽ സംസാരിക്കുന്നു യോഹനാൻ്റെ സുവിശേഷം പതിനൊന്നാം അധ്യായത്തിൻ്റെ ഇരുപത്തി അഞ്ച് ഇരുപത്തി ആറ് വാക്യങ്ങൾ വായിക്കുന്നു യേശു അവളോട് ഞാൻ തന്നെ പുനരുത്ഥാനം ജീവനമാകുന്നു എന്നിൽ വിശ്വസിക്കുന്നവൻ മരിച്ചാലും ജീവിക്കും ജീവിച്ചിരുന്ന് എന്നിൽ വിശ്വസിക്കുന്നവൻ ആരും ഒരു നാളും മരിക്കയില്ല എന്ന് കർത്താവ് പറഞ്ഞു നമ്മൾ ജീവിക്കുന്ന ഈ കാലഘട്ടം വളരെ വ്യത്യസ്തമായ ഒരു കാലഘട്ടമാണ് എന്നാൽ നമ്മൾ പ്രത്യാശിക്കുന്ന സ്വർഗം ഈ കാണുന്നതിനേക്കാൾ ഒക്കെ വളരെ വ്യത്യസ്തമാണ് വ്യത്യസ്തമായിരിക്കും ഇവിടെ രണ്ട് പ്രധാനപ്പെട്ട കാര്യം യേശു പറയുകയാണ് ആദ്യത്തേത് ഇരുപത്തഞ്ചാം വാക്യത്തിൽ പറയുന്നു അതിക്രമങ്ങളാലും പാപങ്ങളാലും മരിച്ച അവസ്ഥയിൽ നിന്ന് ഉയർക്കുന്നതായ അവസ്ഥയെക്കുറിച്ച് കർത്താവ് പറയുന്നു അതിനുശേഷം ജീവിച്ചിരുന്ന വിശ്വാസത്തിൽ നിലനിൽന്ന നിലനിൽക്കുന്നവരെ മരിച്ചാലും ജീവിക്കും എന്ന് കർത്താവ് ഉറപ്പ് നൽകിത്തിരിക്കുകയാണ് മരണാനന്തര ജീവിതത്തെക്കുറിച്ച് ഇത്ര ശക്തമായ ക്ലാരിറ്റി ആയിട്ട് പറയുന്ന ഒരു ഭേദഭാഗമാണ് കർത്താവ് ആ യേശുക്കുശു ഈ പറഞ്ഞ വാക്കുകൾ ആ പ്രത്യാശയാണ് ഈ ഭൂമിയിൽ കർത്താവ് നമ്മെ ഇത്രത്തോളം നിലനിർത്തുന്നതും നമ്മെ നയിച്ചുകൊണ്ടിരിക്കുന്നതും ആ മഹത്തരമായ പ്രത്യാശയിൽ ദുഃഖത്തിലായിരിക്കുന്ന പ്രിയ കുടുംബാംഗൾ എൻ്റെ ബ്രദർ എൻ്റെ ഫസ്റ്റ് കസിൻ ബ്രദർ ഫസ്റ്റ് പ്രിയ ജോയിച്ചാൻ ആൻഡ് ഓൾ ഫാമിലി മെമ്പേഴ്സ് പ്രിയ ടൈജസ് പാഷ ആൻഡ് ഫാമിലി സർവശ്വത്തനായ ദൈവം നിങ്ങളെ ആശ്വസിപ്പിക്കട്ടെ എന്ന് ആത്മാർത്ഥമായി പ്രാർത്ഥിക്കുക ഞങ്ങളുടെ കുടുംബാംഗൾ പല നാട്ടിലായിരിക്കുന്നു എൻ്റെ പിതാവ് പാഷ സി വി ജോൺ ആൻഡ് ഫാമിലി ചാപ്രത് ഫാമിലി കലിശ്ശേരി മംഗലം പൊന്നാരത്തിൽ ഫാമിലി മെഴുവലി കക്കുളഞ്ഞിൽ കുടുംബാംഗങ്ങൾ ഞാൻ പ്രതിദാനം ചെയ്യുന്ന ലണ്ടൻ പെൻഡോസ് ചർച്ച് ആൻഡ് ഫാമിലി മാത്രമല്ല പ്രിയ ബെന്നിൻ്റെയും ബീനായാലെ വിവാഹം നടത്തിയ പാഷ ജോക്രിയൻ ആൻഡ് ഫാമിലി പാഷ ബി മോനച്ചൻ ആൻഡ് ഫാമിലി മറ്റ് എല്ലാ കുടുംബാംഗങ്ങളുടെയും പ്രത്യാശയും കണ്ടോളൻസും പ്രാർത്ഥനയും ഈ സമയത്ത് ഓർപ്പിക്കുന്നു സർവശ്വത്തനായ ദൈവം തമ്പുര നിങ്ങളെ ബലപ്പെടുത്തട്ടെ ധൈര്യപ്പെടുത്തട്ടെ ദൈവം നമ്മളെ അനുകരിക്കുമാറാകട്ടെ 
O God of glory, we remember before you our dear Ben, Suresh Titus. We thank you for giving him to us to know and to love in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us your aid so we may see in death the gate to eternal life. That we may continue our course on earth in confidence until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before us. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Before we have a time for viewing, I'd like for us to practice this one special litany of remembrance. Would you stand for a moment, please? As I read the line, would you repeat the words, we remember him. In the rising of the sun, and it's going down of the same, we remember him. In the blowing of the wind, and in the chill of winter, in the opening of the buds, and in the warmth of the summer, in the rustling of the leaves, and in the beauty of autumn, in the beginning of the year, and when it ends, when we are weary and in need of strength, when we are lost and sick at heart, when we have joys that we yearn to share, so long as we live, the great memory of our dear brother, Ben, shall live with us. Here's Brother Tim Thomas. Please be seated. Next, we're going into uh, doing a time for viewing uh, the body. Um, I have some very specific instructions. I'm going to say it in English, and then I'm going to also attempt to do it in Malayalam. Um, so we are going to have two separate opportunities uh, for viewing. The one that is just coming up, and also um, one towards the end uh, of the service today. So. I have a special request in order for us to make this in a timely and productive way because a lot of other things depend on how we close out today, especially the funeral procession and making it to the burial site. We're requesting that for this viewing, uh, only those who are unable to stay for the full service come up. Okay, So if you're going to be here for the full service, I request you to stay in your seats. Uh, and give others the opportunity to do that. And, and don't worry, you will get an opportunity to uh, come by um, and, and pay your respects. So, if you were here yesterday, you might remember this. Uh, our awesome Merit Memorial staff is going to help guide you. Uh, please don't leave your seats unless they come. Once again, this is for those who want to leave early. Um, it'll start on, the, on your right side here. Uh, Brian... Um, Brian, if you can raise your hand real quick, uh, will direct you and his staff will come to each row. Um, and if you are someone who is wanting to leave early, then please stand and follow them. Uh, we are going to start here, make our way all the way to the front, and then you can uh, go all the way to the right. And you can either exit uh, or go back to your seat if you want to stay here a little longer. Um, we also ask that uh, at this time, um, just so that we can make everything efficient, that uh, you don't take any time to greet the family. Um, and uh, if, if you could be considerate of this, uh, that would be greatly appreciated. I'm also going to say this in Malayalam. Um, Full service in the Likin on Dangil, Ipum in Nikerda, Nerte Pondiorka, our Saran Kuragram, Merit Memorial Staff in the Alcada, Ivernikim, 
അവർ വന്ന് നിങ്ങളെ വിളിക്കും ഫുൾ സേ അതായത് ഫുൾ സർവീസിന് ഇരിക്കുന്നവർ എണ്ണിക്കരുത് നേരത്തെ പോകേണ്ടിയവർ മാത്രം എണ്ണിച്ച് അവരുടെ ഇൻസ്ട്രക്ഷൻസ് ഫോളോ ചെയ്യണം അഷേഴ്സ് വരാതെ ആരും എണ്ണിക്കരുത് നമുക്കെല്ലാം വളരെ ക്രമമായി ചെയ്യേണ്ടതുകൊണ്ട് നിങ്ങളുടെ ശ്രദ്ധ അപേക്ഷിക്കുന്നു ഐ ഇൻവൈറ്റ് എൽ ഐ ടു സ്റ്റാർട്ട്
time I'd like to invite Philip George to come forward and share the eulogy following Brother George. It'll be the family members sharing their reflections. Verghese Titus, Sharon Titus, Betsy George, Zane and Samara George, Benzi and Justina George. Philip George now. Praise the Lord. Forgive me if my voice cracks a little bit this morning. My name is Santosh. I am Benji's cousin. Although it's diff quite difficult for me to do this morning, I'm truly honored. Although his official name is Suresh, we affectionately called him Ben, Benji, Benja, and his mom used to call him Benjamo, and there were other variations. Ben and I, we go way back. We built a close relationship ever since Rani Mama and Tanga Chen, Pastor KP Titus, who's my mom's brother, brought, brought my family to the US in 1983. We first lived together as a family, and then once we moved out, we still spent almost every day together with each other. Either I was at, they were at my house or we were at their house. We did a lot of activities together including playing sports, playing board games like Monopoly, or just hanging out at home with the family. We spent countless hours as one family, as brothers. One of the reasons Ben and I were close because, was because we shared similar interests. One interest was basketball. When we were younger, me, Ben, Varghese, along with his cousins Vinod and Vincent, and few others bonded over basketball that Ben organized. There are times we went to extreme to get in a game of basketball. We traveled miles. We played in extreme frigid weather, cold, below freezing temperature. There were times when I thought my fingers would break off because of how cold it was, but we continued playing as we enjoyed the game. We enjoyed the competition. We enjoyed each other's company, but suffered later but it was all worth it. Besides sports, we spent, or spending time with the family. Benji, he liked to listen to music. He liked many little gadgets, like flying helicopters or remote control cars. He liked going camping. He liked, he even liked going shopping. He enjoyed uh, competitions and challenges. I recall a time when we were teenagers, I challenged him to eat a kantari or a bird eye pepper we, for one dollar. <laughs> he didn't realize this kantari, the small little pepper, how, how, spicy, how spicy can it be, the small little thing, right? He accepted the challenge and he started chewing it. After a little bit, I was feeling really bad because he, I saw him struggling, his face is starting to get red, and I told him he can stop, but a challenge was a challenge to him. He couldn't back down now. He earned that dollar that day. He struggled. He never backed down. No matter how difficult he was, it was, that was part of his character. Benji filled quite a few roles in his life, and I just want to share a few glimpses of that. First of all, he was a son. He was born on October 3rd, 1973, to Pastor KP Titus and Remini Titus. He was their first child. Some of us know what it is like to be a pastor's kid. He did it so well. He shouldered many responsibilities, willingly and gladly. He loved God and he cared for the church and volunteered his time for the church activities. He loved and cared for his parents. Two years back, I remember when his mom was not well in New York, although he wanted to be here in Dallas with Bina and Jordan, he came and stayed with his mom for an extended period of time to make sure that he was there for her. He adored his parents. He was a good son. He has a mixture of both. I see the smile and demeanor of his dad 
and his caring and his genuine nature of his mom. He truly adored his parents and they loved him too. Next role, he was a brother. He loved Varghese and his sister Rosie very much. Ben and Varghese were inseparable and they did everything together. They were the best of friends. And as they did everything, I was pretty much like the third wheel. Big brother loved his baby sister. He was very protective of Rossi. As Rossi was growing up, he helped her, he guided her, and he taught her, and he provided the, all the practical wisdom so she will be able to stand up on her two feet. He loved them both dearly. Next role he played, he was a husband. He was a husband to Bina. They were married on July 10th, 2004. They began their journey as husband and wife almost 18 years ago. They built this beautiful and wonderful relationship as a family. Knowing Benji, he was meticulous, detail-oriented, and he was very thoughtful. I have heard from others that how he would think things through, provided things for Bina without Bina even having to ask for them. He was so considerate. He went out of his way to make her happy. She was his world. When Benji married Bina, he also became a sister, son-in-law, and a brother-in-law. They instantly became a family. They loved him and treated him as their own. Not only that, to see the love between all these siblings and parents were, has been amazing. Even in this past week, when I spent some time with them, I saw their love and care for one another and how much they truly loved Ben. I was just recollecting the other day, a few months ago, Ben, Benzi and Betsy flew down to surprise Rossi for her birthday and to celebrate birthday with her. They were one united family. That was the last time I saw him in person. During Rossi's birthday celebration, Ben hugged each, and each one of us as we were leaving the restaurant. But little did I know that was the last time. I wish I hugged him a little longer. The next role he played in his life, he was a father. Jordan was born on March 19, 2008. Being a father to Jordan was one of his greatest joys in his life. He absolutely adored his baby girl. Ever since she was born, his life revolved around her. His actions and his conversation all included Jordan some way, somehow. He was so happy and proud of all her milestones in her life. He was also very caring and protective of her. I recall when Ben, Bina, and Jordan came to New York for a visit, we took a small trip to Central Park together. And as Jordan was climbing on those rocks, Benji would be cautious of her steps and stood by her side so she wouldn't fall. He wanted to keep her safe. He was very, she was very precious to him. And as he did with Rossi, he provided him, her with instructions so she wouldn't have to struggle in life. Ben assured that Jordan stayed in contact with all her family, relationships from both of her sides, both sides of family and friends. Jordan, your dad loved you, and he's so proud of you. You got to know that. Next, Benji. Benji's next role was that he was a cousin and he was an uncle. All his cousins, extended nephews and nieces, could attest to the fact that Benji had genuine love for his family and friends, and he has, as we have been hearing, all of them appreciate and love him for taking the, his time for each and everyone to encourage them and giving them words of wisdom. There are not many people that would do that, but he invested time for each and every child and taught them and trained them and counseled them. When he was younger, he spent so much time with my nephews and nieces, and he was their basketball coach and life mentor always providing timely advice and godly counsel from his own experiences. My son Aaron, when he was born, he treated him, Benji treated him as his own. He loved and cared for him and he never forgot his birthday or any special occasions. He made sure that his cousins and nephews and nieces all felt and loved by him. Another role, 
For Ben, he was a friend. His, friend, his friends were like family to him. They truly were. Ben had a special place in his heart for his friends. His friends were deeply impacted by his love and care for them. As we can see, his friend circles was not just local. They were far. They, he impacted everyone near and far. He maintained connections and made time for each one of them. He valued friendship. As we've been hearing about Benji, he's one person that was, that loved, was loving and caring and valued relationships. He was one person that prioritized relationships. If you ask anyone, they will tell you that he loved to talk, but he was an even better listener. Benji had meaningful conversations with young children, just as he would with the older generation. Creating a long-lasting bond with each person was his greatest strength. There was a pivotal moment in Benji's life that we heard about yesterday. That was the passing of his cousin, my sister. He loved her dearly. He was quite close to her. When she got sick, he would earnestly pray for her healing. We recall by her deathbed, he would sit on the floor and cry and pour out to God. And when she went to be with the Lord, it was quite devastating for Ben and all of us. And at that moment, he realized the value of life and that we can't take anything for granted and we need to appreciate the more important things in life. He did not care for worldly possessions, money, or fame. That did not matter to him. What was important to him was spending time with those he had loved. Not only was Benji my cousin, my best friend, my best man, he is the one I spent most of my childhood with. He was like a brother to me. Orgiz, Ross, all of you guys, you know that I love you. And as I love you as my brother, I love you as my sister, and me and Julie and the kids, we will always be there for you. I don't believe, I, I don't believe anyone here was expecting to be here or expecting to go through this, but we can't, we can't believe that this has happened. We are all grieving, especially Bina, Jordan, Tangachan, Remini Mama. I know you guys are mourning Varghese, Rossi, Joy Uncle, Lele Mama, Auntie, and Betsy, Benzi, just, and Benzi and Justina and children. This is a difficult time. May God continue to comfort you. Ben fought a good fight and finished his earthly course. We are grieving today and we will continue to grieve. We can rejoice knowing that we have the assurance of seeing him again on that beautiful shore. Benji, we thank you for all that you did for your family, your friends, and your community, your church, and, your, and the kingdom of God. As it states in the obituary, you were a treasured son, our adored brother, devoted husband, loving father. You lived an exemplary life, and you are a role model. You will be missed by all, and your memory and your testimony live, will live within us. We love you, Ben. God bless you all. God, none of this makes sense to me. I have so many feelings about this, and I hope one day all of this turns to understanding on why you took my brother so, his life so early. My brother is my better half. Growing up, we, our cousins were very close to us. Some of, us, some of them lived with us, and some of, us, some of them lived next to us. But these cousins, they weren't just cousins, they were like brothers and sisters to us. And often, some of them, they used to say, Ben, he's the good one. And they would look at me and say, he's okay, but Ben is better. But it, honestly, it's the truth. My brother spent more time with them, talked to them. He made more of an effort to be with them because that was who he was. He loved them. Growing up as kids, my brother, my brother and I used to fight often, sometimes physically. All of that was always one-sided. See, I would get so mad at him, and I would turn and I would try to hurt him.
but he loved me so much that he would just hold my hands so I couldn't do anything to him. He was, my, he was bigger and stronger than me. He could have easily beaten me up, but he loved, the love that he had for his little brother shown the kind nature that started at a young age. My brother loved to talk. He loved to share his experiences to help others better themselves. He always was willing to help younger kids as he's been through so much in his life and he wanted them to avoid the pitfalls of life. Little kids, older, older people loved my brother because he was invested in them. He made them priority at any level. My brother was the richest person I know. He wasn't rich because he had money. He wasn't rich because he had possessions. He was rich because he had love. His love, he gave love and he received love. Look at all you here today. You could have been somewhere else, but you're here to pay your respects to a person who cared about you, loved you, had mutual respect for you, and really was a good guy. That's my brother. We should all learn a lesson from my brother, how to treat one another, showing love to one another, to take the time to communicate with one another. Right now, there are some of you who are at odds with family members and friends. For, over what? For what? Some of this might be trivial. Some of this might be serious. But life is short. There's nothing in this world that can't be worked out. You just have to give it a chance. Be humble. Lower your pride for a second. Take the chip off your shoulder. Activate the forgiveness button that's inside of you. And make the effort to fix the wrongs that have been going on for years. Don't you see that life is short? Are you going to fix things when the person dies? Then it's just too late. And that one, you'll have regret. I am very proud of my brother. For who he was and how he lived his life. Ben, I love you very much. I got Jordan and Rena. Don't worry. I will see you when I get there. Miss Sharon Titus, I am Bencha's younger sister. I cannot believe I'm standing here doing this today. None of this seems real to me. Early in the morning on March 21st, when I found out Bencha left us to be with his creator, in the midst of my tears, the phrase, hope does not disappoint, which is found in Romans 5, 3 verse 5, popped into my mind. Perhaps those words may seem strange and ill-fitting to you at such a moment. Our family and hundreds of people across the United States and in other countries that knew and did not know Bencha personally had been praying around the clock for his healing and deliverance from this unexpected illness. I believed in faith that only God had the ability to preserve his life. But now he was gone and seemingly hope should have gone too. Romans 5, 3, verse 5 says, We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance, and endurance develops strength of character, and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead us to disappointment, for we know how dearly God loves us, because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. Trials develop Endurance. Endurance is the perfect word to describe Bencha's approach to life, especially in recent years. He went through many health issues and setbacks, but he never gave up trying to find, find a path through the pain. 
In the midst of his own suffering, he came alongside his family and friends in their own suffering, spending hours listening to them and giving them encouragement. When our parents were hospitalized back to back in early 2020, Bencha sacrificed his time and attention to come help me and Kocha to care for them. He did not consider his physical ailments greater than the burden he heard in our own voices. He was selfless in that way. Endurance develops strength of character. Bencha was resilient. When I think back on growing up together in New York, the memories that stand out to me the most are the various ways both my big brothers would teach me how to be strong and street smart so that I wouldn't be a pushover in this world. We had a basketball hoop in our backyard where Bencha would force me to play one-on-one -on -one with him. I use the word force because I was smaller and a lot less athletic than him. So I really, I knew it wasn't really a contest. Over and over, he would make me go back behind the line, check the ball to me, and wait for me to make my way to the hoop while he played defense. No matter what he tried, I would call, reach in foul, reach in foul, just to convince him to let me give up. But he wouldn't respond, and I had to strive forward somehow to make a shot attempt. I don't really remember if I ever made many shots, but that didn't really matter. In hindsight, I realized that Bencho was using these moments to teach me to never back down from a challenge, to try my best to get better each time, and to never give up in failure. No matter the end result, the point was to not stop trying. Bencho was loving and caring. He demonstrated it through both actions and words. When I was just two weeks shy of my 21st birthday and couldn't get into the venue for my, first, my very first Switchfoot concert in Manhattan, he came with me and stood with me for 90 minutes with a reassuring smile on his face, despite not knowing any of the songs. He wanted me to have a good time. Over the years, Bencha would often buy me a cup of coffee and my favorite donut without me ever asking. I would wake up and it would be there on the kitchen table waiting for me. When I needed to go car shopping a couple of times, he not only came with me to the dealerships I had researched, but he also took me to several that he knew of just so that I could be more confident in my decision making. But Joe was so excited when I moved to Texas for seminary. He helped me with moving in and adjusting to life in Dallas. He also never made any comments when I needed him to fill in all the accidental holes that I had made in my apartment wall trying to hang up a really big picture. My brother always just helped me, no criticism and never expecting anything in return. Bencha and I have the same silly sense of humor that we got from our dad. We also know a lot of useless trivia, which often came in handy when we played board games as a family. I could make a random reference as a clue, and Bencha would always know exactly what I was saying. Character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. Bencha loved and honored God the best he could in his life. Any time he came back to visit us in New York, he took the opportunity to encourage the kids in our dad's church. He, he spoke genuinely from the heart, sharing his testimony and pointing us to Jesus. Through the highs and lows of his life, Bencha found himself trusting in God to take care of him. That is why I am sure Bencha is resting in the presence of Almighty God today. His confident hope of salvation is now fulfilled. But there is also hope for us, for my parents, for my brother Kocha, for Bina, for Jordan, and the entire family. Parents should not have to bury their children. A married couple should spend their entire lives creating memories together. A daughter should have her daddy walk her down the wedding aisle someday. And siblings should stand shoulder to shoulder to face the joys and sorrows of life together. Everyone here today is experiencing a deep sorrow that only the peace of God can guard and protect from becoming the reason we stop living, even though we are still alive. Our hope is not that life on earth will get easier, 
because as far as I know, my life can never be the same. A piece of me is missing now that Bencha is no longer here. No, our hope is that this life on earth is not the end. We will one day be together with Bencha again. Tabina's family, uncle, auntie, Betsy, Benzie, Justina, Zayn, and Samara. Thank you for the love and care you showed Bencho all these years. He never lacked anything because of you. To my Jiggy J, my Jordan, your daddy loved you so much and was so grateful to God to have you as his daughter. He told me that all the time. He was so proud of you. To Bina, there are no words to express the pain of this moment. So let me only state the facts. You are the best thing that ever happened to my brother. He loved you so much and wanted to make you happy because you brightened up his world. Thank you for loving him. I love you, my sister. To mommy and daddy, you both know how much I try to protect you each day, sometimes probably even a little too much but I couldn't protect you from enduring this pain. Despite all my best efforts, your well-being has always been only in God's hands. I pray that he grants you his supernatural peace and strength to get through this one day at a time. To Kwacha, I know I can't fill Bencha's shoes in your life. He was your built-in best friend. But all we can do is take one step at a time, together as siblings. I love you, and I am always on your side. And finally, to Bencha, the pain of your absence already confronts me, even in so many little things. When I landed in Dallas, it was so strange to not see you waiting for me in baggage claim with a huge smile on your face. I won't be able to FaceTime you on my drives back from Costco anymore. I won't get texts from you asking me to fax something for you. You are finally starting to take me up on my Trader Joe's recommendations. I miss hearing you refer to me as my sister instead of just saying my name. You were the one I could ramble my burdens and complaints to, and you'd listen without telling me to wrap it up, even though I definitely rushed you to finish your stories. I don't think I realized how much you loved me, but now I see that so many people here are impacted by your life and how they describe these same character traits. I am beginning to realize how many blessings I reaped simply by being your little sister. I'm devastated that you're gone, but I am relieved that you're no longer in pain. Rest with Jesus and with Shirley Mama and with our grandparents and our loved ones. I will see you again one day. I love you, Bencha. My name is Betsy. I'm Bina's younger sister. I'm also Bencha's sister by marriage and his little sister by love. I struggled with exactly what I wanted to say today because how can you capture, how can you encapsulate two decades, decades of knowing someone into a few fleeting minutes? What I can say in strong confidence is that Bencha leaves behind a huge legacy from his brief yet full life that he experienced on this earth. You can tell that by looking around the room, the number of people here and online. <clears throat> from day one, Bencha treated me as his little sister. It was important to Bina that the man that she married accepted and loved her family as his own. That prayer was answered as he welcomed not only me, my brother, our parents, our extended family, and all of our friends into his world with wide open arms. Over the years, I witnessed him treating my parents with the utmost respect through his words, 
his actions, and his unconditional love. This, to me, is one of the greatest blessings a son can bring to the household. For me personally, I had always wanted a big brother, not that my older sister didn't suffice, but because I wanted to have the protection and security that in my mind came with that position. And boy, did I ever get an older brother in all its glory with Bencha. Not only did I get a very protected brother, I got the constant teasing that went along with that title. You should see the name that's listed for me on, on his phone. As many of you know, I lived with Bina and Bencha for a while before I moved out of state. I don't know that there are many in-laws that would have done that, but he did. He was the one that offered me that, that opportunity, and I'm grateful for it because it had allowed me the opportunity to see and be involved in my beautiful niece's life, beautiful niece Jordan's life in her earliest years. Bencha would playfully call me his second child because everywhere they went, I went. He included me in everything. He would go out of his way to bring me, my, bring me home my favorite snacks, give me rides, teach me how to fix things on my car and around the house. He'd even graciously accommodate no perfumes or strong air fresheners that he loved because I had headaches. He was beyond generous with his time and resources. He loved to talk and he actively listened. He provided advice, sometimes unsolicited, but he always had something great to say. Even remember times he would open up his wallet and slip me a couple of dollars at church offering just as my dad would do when I was a kid. I'll never forget how he surprised me one day at work. Um, it was a Valentine's Day. He brought baby Jordan and a big bouquet of flowers to me at work because he knew it would bring me so much joy. Bencha did so much for all of us, more than we ever recognized, and he did it with such humility and such love. When I moved to California, he made sure that I had everything I needed. He helped me get settled into my new place. He would check on me constantly and keep me updated with the latest family happenings in Texas. And when I eventually returned back to Texas, he helped me get set up in my apartment. And also, as I moved into my house, he walked with me, he went, he came with me at my final walkthrough. He crawled up the attic, even though he had leg pain and back pain. He wanted to make sure everything was perfect for me. Benja had an arsenal of dad jokes that as silly as they were, would make him and us burst out in laughter. He would walk around the house and break out an original rhyming Bencha songs or phrases that were not only catchy, but repeated nonstop and to the point of no return. So much so, we would have all found ourselves accidentally repeating the same phrases without even knowing it. We all somehow morphed into Bencha or incorporated what I call uh, Bencha-isms into our lives over the years. There's so many more happy and fun memories that I could share with you. To know Bencha was to know the greatest brother, the greatest son, uncle, friend, husband, and father. He walked with integrity and led by example. He loved God and he loved people. To the congregation in this room and online, this is not what any of us could have ever imagined, not what we wanted. We know you share in our shock and deep sorrow because Bencha is not here with us but we do not grieve without hope, as it says in 1 Thessalonians 4. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, so we believe that God will bring us, bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep with him. We're comforted that he is no longer suffering and is with our Father in heaven. For we know to be absent from the body is to be present with Christ. If Bencha was here, he would take this time to remind us that to take every opportunity to love one another, forgive one another, hug each other just a little bit tighter because we know life is, is brief and but a moment. To Uncle, Auntie, Kocha, and Rossi, thank you for raising a wonderful son who we could share and claim as our own. We may not be related by blood, but you will forever be a part of our family and our story. Bencha brought us together, and though he may not be here physically, we will continue to walk through life with you. To my beautiful Pina and Jordan, Bencha loved you so much, and it was evident in everything that he did for and with you. Bina, you were the light of his life and the best thing that ever happened to him. Jordan, we know that your daddy loved you and was so proud of you, and he would talk about you to everyone. 
our hearts ache with you, but know that you're not alone. This room is filled with family and friends who will continue to surround you and be your village even though Benja is not here. With God's grace, peace, provision, and strength, we will get through this together. I love you both very much. To my handsome brother in love, Benja. You've made our lives so much better by knowing you. I'm grateful for all you've done for us, especially for loving, teaching, and supporting me over the years. I didn't say it enough, but I love you very much from the deepest depths of my heart. Thank you for taking care of each of us, even through all the pain and trials that you endured. We know, we know you are in heaven playing, worshiping, worshiping with music, singing and dancing with the angels. Until we see you again, Bencha, I love you. Robin, I love you because you play tricks on me, but sometimes I got you. I will miss you because I love you so much. Even if you pass away, I will still love you. And I love you. And I've been grateful to you. I miss coloring pictures with you and making glass. I miss you coming to my house. I love you very much. I'm Justina, Benzie's wife. Um, by technicality, Bencha is my husband's brother-in-law, but I do not see him as anything less than my brother. Bencha was such an integral part of our everyday life that it will be hard for me to encompass all that he was to us, but I will try my best to convey some of that. From the moment I met him, his warmth, hospitality, and intentionality has always stood out. Um, we met him a long time ago, me and my sisters, as well as my 11 cousins. Um, we visited their home, and he made sure we felt right at home, and every encounter since then has been the same. Ben Cho, as many people have mentioned, offered every person he encountered a listening ear and a sweet smile. Most people that know him know he loved telling stories or talking about his reflections on life. This is what I will miss most about him. We would often get lost in conversation and it's very hard for me to imagine going a week without talking to him. He was not just my husband's brother-in-law or my kid's uncle, but a kindred spirit in a lot of ways. I looked to Pencha a lot to understand how to be the perfect in-law. 
he, it just came so naturally for him. He loved our parents very much and would do anything to serve them. He was a good older brother to Benzi and Betsima and me. But more than anything, he was a really good uncle to my children. They affectionately called him Mabin. In Malayalam, there's a word for dad, sister, and that's a Mavi. And we try to get it stick to stick for being a mama, but it didn't. But for some reason, Mavin stuck with Bencha. And in true Bencha fashion, he, tr he changed Mavin to Ma Ben to include his name. Um, so the kids know him as Mabin. Mabin um, provided them with dance parties and fun ideas and silly jokes and always entertained their imagination. A lot of people don't know this, but um, there's a song by Hillsong called Anchor that he introduced me to that he played over and over again when I was pregnant with Samara. That is where I got her middle name because the first line goes, I have this hope as an anchor for my soul. And that resonated with me. It's based off of Hebrews 6 verse 19. So she will always have a part of Mobin as her middle name. And uh, I think that's appropriate because Mobin was her best friend. Our, our babies will miss their Mobin because there was no one like him in their lives. And he was the best, best uncle we could have asked for. But we have this hope that he is with the Lord and he is waiting for us. And this will be an anchor for us. A lot of us hope, pray, and strive to love like Jesus, but Bencha just intrinsically lived that way. He was so selfless, always offering up his home, his time, and himself without hesitation. I didn't deserve him as a brother, but it will always be one of my life's greatest honors, being one of his sisters. I want to take this time to thank his family, his uncles, his aunts, his cousins, his nephews, his nieces, his mom and dad, Achachin, Rasma. Thank you for sharing Bencha with us. He loved deeply and he loved big, and we, we are forever changed by his love. So thank you. Bencha, thank you for everything. Save me a seat. We'll see you soon. I am Benzi. Bencha was my brother-in-law. He was one of my best friends. He was the best man at my wedding. And he was a brother of mine for 19 years. To make this easier on me, I've just decided to share some memories first, then sit, share the current realities, and share and land with the desired hope. I know everything won't encapsulate our whole story or explain our true relationship, but I hope to try to share a glimpse of what the last 19 years has been about. I remember when Bencha first came down to visit our family, I was 16 years old. His desire was to get to know us, not just Binama, but the rest of our family. I remember Binama telling me he liked to play basketball. <laughs> that was the age that I really started to play more often, and I thought, oh, sure, he plays basketball. Probably not very good. Um, well, I was wrong. <laughs> he was actually really good. He was very quick for a big guy. <laughs> he could pivot on a dime. 
He was a rebounding machine. About surely since, you know, he's trying to marry my sister, he would let me win, but no, he didn't. <laughs> he, he liked competition too much. But the reason why he was playing basketball with me was because he wanted to connect with me. Benja was competitive, but he was also intentional. There was another time that I went to go buy a car as well. I'd never caught, bought a car on my own, and I had just recently graduated from college, and I needed help, and you know, Bencha always would be offering to help, even when we didn't ask. Things weren't going well with the car salesman, and the salesman had gotten angry at me because of the pricing I was asking for. The, sales, the car salesman had belittled me yeah, in front of everyone, and Bencha got immediately angry. Now, you may know that although Bencha is warm and loving and, and basically a caring teddy bear, he is strong and he's an intimidating looking teddy bear. He immediately had my back and I thought for a second that Bencha was going to clobber the salesman. <laughs> I was more worried about the salesman than the sale at that point in time. <laughs> Bencha was a protector, an advocate, and a helper. I remember when I was getting married and had to decide out of all my best friends who might be my best man. In Indian culture, it is expected to be a family. But for me, it wasn't just an expectation. It was because I wanted Bencha to be one of my best men. I lived in Bencha and Bina's house. Similarly, similarly to Betsma, <laughs> I just I just show up all the time. He always treated me like a brother. He watched out for me. He cared for me. He provided for me. He loved me. He loved everyone he talked to. He just would get to know you and talk to you for hours and hours. He would feed you until you went into a food coma. Do you want snacks, cookies, water, tea, soda? They were all from Walmart or Costco. <laughs> It was like all of our amachis that tried to feed us until we regretted it, but it was because Bencha was hosp uh, hospitable. Bencha was always a lover first and a fighter second. He was my brother. He was my brother. Bencha, although relatively healthy, suffered physically. He had several back surgeries and always had an extended and extensive time of rehab. <clears throat> I often think that his family back in New York had fun times with Bencha. And although we, we had so much fun with Bencha, we also saw him suffer on and off. But he never fully communicated that suffering because Bencha always cared about others, that he would lay down his own needs for the needs of others. He would love others even when love wasn't given to him. He loved us so much. He, loves, he loved my kids so much. He loved Zayn and Samara. He had unique bonds with the both of them. My daughter wouldn't go to a lot of people when she was younger, but she would always go to Bencha. They called him Mobbin. Although they are young, they have understood that they've lost their Mobbin. And all I hope is that they remember him as the most loving, kind, servant heart that he has, has always been. He loved Justina so much, he always, always intentionally talked to her and asked about her. And he made her feel welcome into our family. They would talk so long that we would know if Justina and Bencha were talking, we'd be there for several more hours. I knew what it meant to be an older brother to my wife family because of how Bencha treated my own family. I knew what it meant to be a loving husband because of how he loved Binama. I knew what it meant to be a good dad because of how he cared for Jordan. I knew what it meant to be a caring son-in-law because of how he treated my parents. <laughs> His life helps me helps remind me of what it means to live a life full of love, of kindness, of risk-taking, of living like a child and having childlike faith. This last year, Bencha had changed. There was something about his faith that had increased. He started sharing more about his life lessons and how he was becoming more grateful to God about his life, grateful that he had his family, grateful for his times with us and on his time on this earth, almost sub subconsciously like God was preparing to come home to him. With every loss of a loved one, we tend to have regrets as we process grief. I've had my fair share of those thoughts. 
things I wish I said differently, things I wish I did differently, things that I could have happened differently. I never expected that this would happen. None of us expected this to happen. We were all praying and expecting God to intervene. It didn't make sense. None of this made sense. Bencha was too young, too kind, too loving to be taken from us. It was too early in our mind, but I can't help but believe that God had a plan. God had a plan to remind each of us that it's this isn't our world, that this isn't our final destination. This world is just a place we pass through because we need to live a life knowing that we can actually make an impact on this earth, on someone else in this world. Bencha, you made an impact on everyone here. Thank you for that. Thank you for being my brother. Thank you for joining our two families together. I thank God that 19 years ago in the driveway of my parents' house, I met one of the most kind-hearted and loving people that would, we would have ever known. Being mine and Jordan, I love you both so much. Everyone in this room both loves you and Benja and Jordan. He, he will never be forgotten. He will always be remembered. And we are here for you. Our ha family is here for you. <clears throat> We know that God is near to you and that he will provide the hope and comfort that only he can provide, that our resurrected Christ reminded us of in John 14. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the place that I'm going. We know that Bencha knew the way, and we know that when we get there, we will see him too. Bencha, I miss you, and I love you and I hope to see you soon. The songwriter writes, in my father's house, there's a big backyard where we can play football. May I add, this morning, maybe in the front yard, there's a basketball court. Maybe Ben is shooting some hoops today. We'll be able to join him one day. Would you stand for a moment as I read this scripture? You've been sitting for a while. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 20 and 21. The scripture reads, for our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body that it may be conformed to his glorious body according to the working by which he is able to subdue all things to himself. Philippians chapter 4, beginning with verse 6, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus our Lord. Eternal Father, this is our prayer for Bina. This is our prayer for Jordan and the entire family. That the peace of God, that passes all human understanding, to be their guard. Your son's name we pray. Amen. Be seated today. We are on a tight schedule this morning, and yet we are eager to hear further from the parents. And so at this time, I'd like to invite Pastor Daniel K. George, along with his wife and also Pastor K.P. Titus, his wife, to come forward and share a few moments with us. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Kanami Ture Vishwasata Tadenva 
ദിവസം നാമോക്കോരുക്കി നിൽക്കുന്നുണ്ടക്കേരെ കാത്തതാ വേഗന്ന ചേർന്നിടും ഭംഗിയേറിയ തീരത്ത് വേഗന ചേർന്നിടും ഭംഗിയേറിയ തീരത്ത് blessed be the name of the lord god who is our refuge and our strength a very present help in our times of trouble the god who has said i will never leave you i will never forsake you for i will be with you even until the end of days as i stand here to celebrate the life and legacy of our beloved son ben along with my wife lilama and my our son bensi to celebrate the life of our beloved son he came to our family as our son in law as the husband of Benamo for the past 18 years he was not our son in law he was our son it was a blessing to have him in our house he was like a pillar a strong pillar though who was always there for us loving us and taking care of us Thank you, Pastor Titus and family, for sharing your son with us. Dukhi dhe re aashya supi gina. Samadhanam nalgi namle aashya supi gina. Sarva shakthana aida yut ende. Tiribam baage kadun na vanna nyangalai. Nyangalai dukhatil nyangalai aashya supi givanam. Nyangalai kaishwa saavajan nyangal paranyu tanda. Nyangal kuende prarthi givan. ദൂരത്തു നിന്നും ചാരത്തു നിന്നും കടന്നു വന്നവരും ഓൺലൈനിൽ ഞങ്ങളെ ശ്രദ്ധിക്കുന്നവരായ എല്ലാ പ്രിയപ്പെട്ടവരെയും ഞങ്ങൾ കർത്തനാമത്തിൽ വന്ദനം ചെയ്യുന്നു അവർ സൺ ബെൻ വെൻ ടു ബി വിത്ത് ലോഡ് ടു ഹിസ് ഇറ്റേണൽ ഹോം ഇൻ ഹെവൻ ക്വൈറ്റ് അൺഎക്സ്പെക്റ്റഡ്ലി ആൻഡ് സഡൻലി വാസ് വെരി ഷോക്കിംഗ് വി ആർ സോ ഡിവാസ്റ്റേറ്റഡ് our hearts are broken and truly filled with mixed emotions of deep sadness about the irreplaceable physical loss but of course with the sure confidence and hope that we will meet him soon and very soon on the other shore at the trumpet call of our lord jesus christ which is our glorious and living hope we know that our savior our redeemer He is soon to return. My words are inadequate. In fact, I am at loss for words this morning, so I'm just using it, so reading some notes as well. To express the pain and sorrow that we have and we feel now in losing a very loving and a very caring son who was always there for all of us and to help us. any and everyone in need of anything in their lives he was there as it is recorded in the book of esther chapter 10 verse 3 about the jew mordecai he was great among the jews and well received well favored by the multitude of his brethren seeking the good of his people and speaking peace to his countrymen <laughs> യഹൂദനായ മുർദേഖായി യഹൂദന്മാരിൽ വെച്ച മഹാനും സഹോദര സംഘത്തിന് ഇഷ്ടനും സ്വന്ത ജനത്തിന് ഗുണകാംക്ഷിയും തൻ്റെ സർവ വംശത്തിനും അനുകൂലവാദിയുമായിരുന്നു ദാറ്റ് വാസ് ബെൻ ഹി ഹാഡ് എ സ്പെഷ്യൽ ക്വാളിറ്റി ടു കണക്ട് വിത്ത് പീപ്പിൾ ഹി വുഡ് നോർമലി ഇനിഷ്യേറ്റ് ദാറ്റ് കണക്ഷൻ ഇൻ സച്ച് എൻ ഓസം വേ 
And he will continue to maintain that loving relationship, a very selfless relationship with a very loving, uh, uh, fervent heart and a servant heart. He loved the Lord Jesus so deeply and enjoyed worshiping and fellowshipping with the people of God with such genuine love and devotion. Although it was a short-lived life, a life well-lived, well loved by all, and one who loved all, regardless. All others exemplifying the virtues of selflessness, sacrifice, service, genuine love, grace, and integrity. He was a young man with a lot of love great passion, and at most care for his beloved family, extended families, friends, and families everywhere. He was a loving husband for Bina, a great dad for Jordan, a wonderful big brother, elder brother for Vogis, Rossi, Betsy, Betsy and Justina. He was a great uncle for Zane and Samara. Their favorite Mabin. Our children and grandchildren will miss him dearly. He treated us, me and Lilama, with great respect, and his parents with great respect and with great concern. Proverbs 10 7 says, Blessed is the memory of the righteous, Nidhi Mandi. He was a blessed and righteous man. The word of God says, Blessed are they who die in Christ, for they shall rest from their labor, and their works and their deeds shall follow them. What a blessed young man he was. We thank God for his life. Although short-lived, he brought so much joy and so much happiness into our family. His life of faith, his life of hope, his life of lo love, loving the Lord and loving other people. He fought a good fight victoriously. He fought a good fight victoriously. He ran his race successfully. And he kept his faith sincerely and now awaiting to rise up at the trumpet call of Christ for his crown of righteousness. Proverbs 14.32 says, The righteous has hope in death. Oh yes, the book of Daniel chapter 12 verse 13 says, Oh Daniel, go on to the end, uh, till the end, and go rest until the end, and you shall rise up to receive your inheritance at the end of days. As we know, that verse tells us that. He is released from his sufferings, from his physical pains, from physical labor. Now he's resting peacefully in God's presence, enjoying the face of God. There's a verse that comes to my mind, Psalm 17, verse 15, where David said, As for me, I will see your face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake in your likeness. And the, I pray this morning, even though my words are limited and our time is so limited, I pray that let that be our own desire and intense desire and hope as well, just like David. We know that Ben is in a better home, his eternal abode, enjoying the glories of heaven and the and enjoying the face of his creator and his redeemer, Jesus Christ. However, we will miss him deeply. As a family, we will miss him. Jesus will descend from heaven. That is our glorious hope. That is our blessed hope. That is our eternal hope. That's our only hope. 
and the dead in Christ shall rise up first. Christ will be the first one. You are 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 the first one. ആകാശത്തിൽ സ്വർഗത്തിലേക്ക് മേഘത്തിലേക്ക് എടുക്കപ്പെടും പ്രൈസ് അലോൺ വി ഷാൽ ഓൾ ബി റാപ്ചേഡ് റിസറക്റ്റഡ് ആൻഡ് ട്രാൻസ്ഫോംഡ് ആൻഡ് റാപ്ചേഡ് ഇൻ ടു ഹെവൻ ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് അവർ ഹോപ്പ് ദിസ് മോർണിംഗ് ഐ പ്രേ ദറ്റ് ഗാഡ് വിൽ കണ്ടിന്യൂ ടു കണ്ടിന്യൂ ടു എസ്റ്റാബ്ലിഷ് അവർ ഫെയ്ത്ത് ഹെൽപ്പ് എസ് ടു എസ്റ്റാബ്ലിഷ് അവർ ഫെയ്ത്ത് നോയിങ് ദാറ്റ് അവർ ലൈഫ് ഇസ് ഷോർട്ട് ഡേവിഡ് സെഡ് ദർ ഇസ് ബട്ട് വൺ സ്റ്റെപ്പ് ബിറ്റ്വീൻ മീ ആൻഡ് ഡെത്ത് എനിക്കും മരണത്തിനും ഇടയിൽ ഒരു സ്റ്റെപ്പ് മാത്രം ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് എ സർട്ടൺ സ്റ്റെപ്പ് ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് എ ഇറ്റ്സ് എ പാസിംഗ് സ്റ്റെപ്പ് ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് എൻ അൺസർട്ടൺ സ്റ്റെപ്പ് ബട്ട് വി നോ ദാറ്റ് ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് എ റിയാലിറ്റി ആസ് ഐ ലുക്ക് അറ്റ് ദ ലൈഫ്ലെസ് ബോഡി ഓഫ് അവർ സൺ നോ വി നോ ദാറ്റ് ദിസ് ഈസ് എ റിയാലിറ്റി ദിസ് മോർണിംഗ് ഡ്യൂ ടു ദ ഷോർട്ടേജ് ഓഫ് ടൈം മേ ഐ ടേക്ക് എ മോമെൻറ്റ് ടു എക്സ്പ്രസ് our thanks to all of you for your valuable prayers and support during our difficult time and again once again may i request your continued prayers especially for bina and jordan so that they may sustain and stay strong in their faith and in their hope in the lord thank you all ആഗോലത്തിൽ ആശ്വസിപ്പാൻ ആവശ്യങ്ങളിലാശ്രയിപ്പാൻ അങ്ങല്ലാതാരും ഇല്ല ഞങ്ങൾക്ക് ആത്മനാഥായി പാരിടത്തിൽ അങ്ങല്ലാതാരും ഇല്ല ഞങ്ങൾക്ക് ആത്മനാഥായി പാരിടത്തിൽ എൻ പ്രാണനാഥൻ എന്നു വരും എന്നു തീരും ഞങ്ങളുടെ വേദനകൾ എൻ പ്രാണനാഥൻ എന്നു വരും എന്നു തീരും ഞങ്ങളുടെ വേദനകൾ സ്തോത്രം ദൈവനാമത്തിൻ്റെ മഹത്വം ഉണ്ടാകട്ടെ ഞങ്ങളുടെ കുഞ്ഞ് ഞങ്ങളെ യാത്ര അയക്കുന്നതിന് മുമ്പേ ഞങ്ങൾ അവനെ യാത്ര അയക്കേണ്ടി വന്നതുകൊണ്ട് എൻ്റെ ഹൃദയത്തിൽ ഒത്തിരി മലയാളത്തിൽ തന്നെ പറയണമെന്ന ദിവസങ്ങൾ കൊണ്ട് ഞാൻ വിചാരിക്കുന്നത് എൻ്റെ ഹൃദയത്തിൽ എനിക്ക് വിവരിക്കാൻ വയ്യാത്ത കട്ടി ഭാരം നിറഞ്ഞിരിക്കുക എൻ്റെ കുഞ്ഞിൻ്റെ കാര്യം ഇനി പറഞ്ഞാൽ ആ വേദന എനിക്ക് കൂടും അതുകൊണ്ട് ദിനം പ്രതി ഞങ്ങളെ കർത്താവ് വിളിക്കുന്നിടം വരെ ഓരോ ദിവസം ഹാലലുയ ദൈവത്തോട് പറഞ്ഞ് ദൈവത്തിൻ്റെ സണ്ണിൽ ഹൃദയ നിൽക്കത്തോട് നന്ദിയോടെ ഇരിപ്പാനിടയാകണം എനിക്ക് എന്ത് പറയണമെന്നോ എന്ത് ചെയ്യണമെന്നോ അറിയത്തില്ല ഒരുപാട് കാര്യങ്ങൾ പറയാൻ എന്തെങ്കിലും ഉണ്ട് എനിക്ക് പറയാൻ കഴിയത്തില്ല ഞാൻ പറയുന്നതിൽ ബെറ്ററായിട്ട് എൻ്റെ കുഞ്ഞുങ്ങളും എൻ്റെ പ്രിയപ്പെട്ടവരെല്ലാം ഇന്നലെ തൊട്ട് പറയുക ചില ദിവസങ്ങൾ കൊണ്ട് ഹൃദയത്തിൽ വരുക നീ ഒന്നും പറയണ്ട നീ പോയി അവിടെ ഇരുന്ന് അത് ശ്രദ്ധിക്കുക ഞാൻ സാധാരണ ഇംഗ്ലീഷിലാണ് സംസാരിക്കുന്നത് ഇങ്ങനെയൊക്കെ ഉള്ള പക്ഷെ പക്ഷേ എൻ്റെ ഹൃദയത്തിൽ മലയാളത്തിൽ തന്നെ പറയണം എന്നെ കേൾക്കുന്ന എൻ്റെ പ്രിയപ്പെട്ടവരൊക്കെ നാട്ടിലുണ്ട് ദൈവത്തിൻ്റെ വചനം പറയുന്നു 
ദൈവത്തെ സ്നേഹിക്കുന്നവർക്ക് നിർണയ പ്രകാരം വിളിക്കപ്പെട്ടവർക്ക് തന്നെ സകലവും നന്മയ്ക്കായി കൂടി വ്യാപരിക്കുന്നു ഞാൻ ഇപ്പോൾ മാത്രമല്ല അനേക നാളുകളായി അതിനെക്കുറിച്ച് ചിന്തിക്കുക അങ്ങനെ ഒരുപാട് പേര് പറഞ്ഞവർ ആരാ പറഞ്ഞതെന്നും എന്തുകൊണ്ടാ പറഞ്ഞതും എന്നും നോക്കുമ്പോൾ ആ വചനം അതുപോലെ ഏറ്റെടുപ്പാനുള്ള കൃപ എനിക്ക് വേണം അത് ഐ പെർപ്പസ് ഇൻ മൈ ഹാർട്ട് ടു ബിലീവ് വട്ട് ഗാഡ് സെറ്റ് ദൈവം പറഞ്ഞത് ശരിയാണെന്ന് എനിക്ക് വളരെ ഹൃദയവേദനയുണ്ട് എൻ്റെ കുഞ്ഞ് ഒരുപാട് കഷ്ടപ്പെട്ടു അവനെ വേദന സഹിക്കാൻ ഞങ്ങളുടെ വീട്ടിലുള്ള മൂന്ന് മക്കളിൽ ഏറ്റവും വേദന സഹിക്കാൻ കഴിവുള്ളവനാണ് ചെറുപ്പം മുതലേ അതവന് പ്രത്യേക കൃപ കൊടുത്തതാണ് അവന് ഒരുപാട് അവനൊരു ഹാപ്പി ചൈൽഡായിരുന്നു ഫുൾ ഓഫ് ലൈഫ് ഫുൾ ഓഫ് ആക്ടിവിറ്റീസ് എൻ്റെ കുഞ്ഞ് വർഷങ്ങളായി പലവിധത്തിലുള്ള ബാക്ക് സർജറി പലവിധത്തിലുള്ള പ്രശ്നങ്ങൾ എന്നാൽ അതെല്ലാം അടക്കി അടക്കി എപ്പോൾ വിളിച്ചാലും മമ്മി എവറിത്തിങ് ഈസ് ഓക്കെ പ്രൈമറി കെയർ ഡോക്ടർസ് ഇട്ട് എവറിത്തിങ് ഈസ് ഓക്കെ മെനി ടൈം ഞാൻ വിളിക്കുമ്പോൾ അവനെ കിട്ടത്തില്ല കാരണം മറുപടി പറയാൻ കിട്ടത്തില്ല ഞാൻ ഇതൊന്നും പറയാൻ വിചാരിച്ചതല്ല എഴുതി വെച്ച് പറയാൻ ഞാൻ താല്പര്യപ്പെടുന്നില്ല ഞാൻ എഴുതി വെച്ച് അതുപോലെ പറയത്തില്ല എൻ്റെ കുഞ്ഞ് പറഞ്ഞ കാര്യങ്ങൾ കഴിയുന്നതും ഞാൻ സപ്പോർട്ട് ചെയ്തു പ്രത്യേകിച്ച് ബീനയുമായുള്ള വിഭാഗത്തിന് ചോദിച്ചപ്പം ഞാൻ പറഞ്ഞു എൻ്റെ കുഞ്ഞിന് താല്പര്യപ്പെട്ടത് എൻ്റെ താല്പര്യം ഡാളസി മൂവ് ചെയ്യുവാന്ന് പറഞ്ഞപ്പം ഞാൻ പറഞ്ഞു എൻ്റെ കുഞ്ഞ് അത് ഇഷ്ടപ്പെടുന്നെങ്കിൽ അവൻ്റെ ആത്മീയ ജീവിതമാണ് എനിക്ക് ഏറ്റവും ഇഷ്ടമുള്ളത് അതാണ് ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻ്റ് എനിക്ക് അതുപോലെ അവൻ പറഞ്ഞു മമ്മി ഐ മിസ് യു ഓൾ നിങ്ങളൂടെ അവിടെ വരേനെ ഐ ഡോ വാണ്ട് ബീന ടു ലൂസ് ഹർ ടാലൻറ്റ് വിച്ച് ഗാഡ് ഹാസ് ഗിവൺ ഷീ ഇസ് എ വെരി ഗുഡ് വർഷിപ്പ് ലീഡർ ആൻഡ് എ ഫെയ്ത്ഫുൾ സെർവൻറ്റ് ഓഫ് ഗാഡ് വുമൻ ഓഫ് ഗാഡ് അവൾ ചർച്ചിലൊക്കെ മ്യൂസിക്കൽ ഇൻസ്ട്രുമെൻറ്റ് വായിക്കുകയും അതേസമയം സിങ് ചെയ്യുകയും ചെയ്യും ദൈവം ഒക്കെ വളരെ കൃപ കൊടുത്തിട്ടുണ്ട് ഷീസ് എ വെരി ബ്രൈറ്റ് വുമൻ I am so glad that God has given Bina to our family to my to be as my daughter-in-law. I am not considering my daughter-in-law as a daughter-in-law. She is my girl, my, my little my young girl. And the daughter and the Rosie are going to be my daughter. I am going to be my daughter. I am going to be my daughter. Joy Chan brother, Lila Ame, Benzi and Gudumbo. ബീന ജസ് ബസി അങ്ങനെ അവരുടെ സഹോദരങ്ങളെല്ലാം ഇത്രയും സാക്രിഫിഷ്യലായി ന്യൂയോർക്കിലായിരുന്നു അവന് ഇത്രയും കെയർ കിട്ടത്തില്ലായിരുന്നു അവൻ്റെ കെയറും സപ്പോർട്ടും കൊടുത്ത് നിങ്ങളവരെ സാക്രിഫിഷ്യലായിട്ട് നിങ്ങൾ ചെയ്ത എല്ലാം നിങ്ങളുടെ നല്ല പ്രവർത്തിക്കും എന്നെ എൻ്റെ 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 വീട്ടുകാരെ കാട്ടിൽ ഞാൻ നിങ്ങളെ അധികം സ്നേഹിക്കുന്നു കാരണം നിങ്ങൾ എൻ്റെ കുഞ്ഞിനെ അവൻ്റെ കഷ്ട സമയത്തെല്ലാം കെയർ ചെയ്തുകൊണ്ട് ഐ കെ നോട്ട് താങ്ക് യു ഇൻ ഓഫ് ഞാൻ അവിടെയും ഇവിടെയൊക്കെ ചേർത്ത് പറയുക എനിക്ക് എന്തോ പറയേണ്ടിയെന്ന് തന്നെ സം ടൈം ഇറ്റ്സ് വെരി ഹാർഡ് ഫോർ മീ ടു സേ എനിക്ക് വളരെ വേദനയുണ്ടെങ്കിലും എൻ്റെ കുഞ്ഞ് ആത്മീയമായ നിലയിൽ വളരെ ഇമ്പ്രൂവ് ആയിരിക്കുന്നത് കാണുവാൻ എനിക്കിടയായത് എൻ്റെ ജീവിതത്തിലൊരു ഭാഗ്യമായി ഞാൻ കരുതുന്നു ഇത്രയും പേരെ ടച്ച് ചെയ്യാൻ ചെറിയ വിധത്തിലും വലിയ വിധത്തിലെങ്കിലും പല വിധത്തിൽ ഇത്രയും പേരെ ടച്ച് ചെയ്യാൻ പേഴ്സണലായി നിങ്ങളെയൊക്കെയും ടച്ച് ചെയ്യാൻ ദൈവം അവൾ അവന് കൊടുത്ത കൃപയ്ക്കായി അത് കാണുവാൻ ദൈവം എനിക്ക് ഭാഗ്യം തന്നതിനായി ഞാൻ ദൈവത്തെ സ്തുതിക്കുന്നു എൻ്റെ വാക്കുകളെ ദീർപ്പിക്കുന്നില്ല കാരണം സമയത്തിന് പോകേണ്ടതുകൊണ്ട് അത് എൻ്റെ കുഞ്ഞിൻ്റെ ഈ ഫൈനൽ ഹോം ഗോയിങ് സർവീസിലെ അവനെ ഓണർ ചെയ്യാനായിട്ട് ഞാൻ എൻ്റെ വാക്കുകളെ ഇവിടെ ചുരുക്കുവാൻ പോവുകയാണ് ദൈവത്തിൻ്റെ സമാധാനം കൊണ്ട് നമ്മളെ ഏവരെയും നിറയ്ക്കട്ടെ എനിക്ക് മറ്റ് കാര്യങ്ങളൊക്കെ പറയണമെന്നുണ്ട് പക്ഷെ അതിനുള്ള അവസരമില്ല ഐ റെസ്പെക്ട് ഓൾ ഓഫ് യു ഐ ലവ് യു ഓൾ 
നിങ്ങൾ കാണിച്ച നിങ്ങൾ കാണിച്ച കരുണ ദയ എൻ്റെ ജോടൻ കുഞ്ഞിനെയും ബീനയെയും ഞങ്ങളെയും ഞങ്ങളെ കർത്താവ് വിളിക്കുന്നിടം വരെ ഞങ്ങളുടെ സ്റ്റെപ്പുകൾ ഓരോന്നും ദൈവത്തിൻ്റെ പാതയിൽ തന്നെ നടക്കുവാൻ ഇടയാക്കണം ദൈവനാമം മഹത്വപ്പെടണം വേറെ ഒരു വാക്യം മുപ്പത്തിനാലാം സങ്കീർത്തനത്തിലെ ഞാൻ യഹോബി എല്ലാ കാലത്തും വാഴ്ത്തും അവൻ്റെ സ്തുതി എപ്പോഴും എൻ്റെ നാവിന്മേലിരിക്കും ചില വർഷങ്ങളായി ഞാൻ ആ വാക്ക് പറയുമ്പോൾ കഷ്ട സമയത്തും കർത്താവിനെ സ്തുതിക്കാൻ ഇടയാകണമെന്ന് ഞാൻ ദൈവത്തിൻ്റെ സാക്ഷി പറയുമ്പോൾ പലപ്പോഴും ചർച്ചയിൽ പറഞ്ഞിട്ടുണ്ട് എൻ്റെ ജീവിതത്തിൽ ഇതുവരെ വന്നിട്ടുള്ളതിൽ ഏറ്റവും വലിയ കഷ്ടമാണ് ഈ കഷ്ടത്തിലും എൻ്റെ ദൈവത്തിൻ്റെ നാമത്തെ പുകഴ്ത്തുവാൻ ദൈവത്തെ നന്ദി പറയുവാൻ ദൈവത്തിൻ്റെ സന്നിധിയിൽ താഴ്മയോടും യഹോഭക്തിയോടും വിശുദ്ധിയോടും ദൈവവചനപ്രകാരം ദൈവഭയത്തിലും നന്ദിയുള്ളവരായി ജീവിക്കുവാൻ ഞാൻ ആഗ്രഹിക്കുന്നു ഈ ഞങ്ങളുടെ കഷ്ടതയിൽ ഞങ്ങളുടെ ഈ അതിദുഃഖവേളയിൽ അനേകർ ഞങ്ങളെ കേൾക്കുന്നവരും കാണുന്നവരും വിശുദ്ധ ജീവിതം ചെയ്യുവാൻ ദൈവത്തോട് കൂടുതൽ അടുക്കുവാൻ അനേകർ ദൈവത്തെ അറിയാത്തവർ ദൈവം ആ മഹത്വത്തിന് വേണ്ടി ജീവിക്കുവാൻ ഇടയാകുന്നുവെങ്കിൽ ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് ഓൾ മൈ പ്രയർ ഗോഡ് വിൽ ഗീവ് എ സ്ട്രെങ് ആൻഡ് വിത്ത് ഓൾ ഓഫ് യുവർ പ്രേയേഴ്സ് ഐ നോ ഗോഡ് വിൽ സസ്റ്റൈൻ അസ് ദർ ഈസ് എ ഡേ കമ്മിങ് വി വിൽ ഓൾ റിജോയ്സ് വിത്തൗട്ട് പെയിൻ ഗോഡ് ബ്ലസ് താങ്ക് യു Good morning and I greet you all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I am here to say that all of you are here in Kerala, Gulf country, and all of you are here to say that all of you are here to say that all of you are here to say that all of you are here. കർത്താവിനെ മഹത്വം ഐ ആം എ പാസ്റ്റർ ആൻഡ് സൺ ഓഫ് എ പാസ്റ്റർ ഓവർ സിക്സ്റ്റി ഇയേഴ്സ് ഐ ആം പ്രീച്ചിങ് ദ ഗോസ്പൽ സോ ദിസ് ടൈം ബിഫോർ ഐ സേ ഫ്യൂ വേർഡ്സ് ഐ എം ഗോയിങ് ടു സ്പീക്ക് ഫ്രം ദ വേർഡ് ഓഫ് ഗോഡ് ആൻഡ് ദെൻ ഐ പ്രൊസീഡ് ഐ വോണ്ട് ടേക്ക് മച്ച് ടൈം ഐ ആം വെരി ടൈം കോൺഷ്യസ് Uh, Denny read the scripture in Philippians chapter 3 verses 20 and 21. For our conversation is in heaven. From whence also we look for a savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our wild body shape. that it is may be fashioned unto his glorious body according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself paul describe here about our heavenly citizenship he mentioned our conversation is in heaven This is not our talk or speak, but our common wealth is in heaven. We belong to another country. Our permanent abode is not here. The Greek term denotes here in Philippians chapter 3, it comes from a greek word the meaning is denotes it's a colony of foreigners this is exactly what we are we are a foreign colony foreigners here in the united states in the world our farmer and the board as i said not here it is in heaven we belong to another country the christians 
do not and we are in this world but we do not forget that we are a citizen of heaven there's a song goes like this this world is not my home i am just passing through my treasures are laid up where beyond the blue the angels beckon from the heavens golden shores and i can feel at home in this world anymore As we know, Philippe was a Roman colony, and her citizens were mostly Roman soldiers. The city was characterized by Roman dress, Roman government, justice, and morals. Just as the Roman colonists now were. forget they are the citizen of rome therefore we christians also do not forget we are the citizen of heaven temporarily we are staying in this country so we are to be a part in for each and every one and look for that day when we all go up in heaven a particular word it's mentioned we look for a savior that's what exactly we eagerly look for a savior patiently waiting for the savior his appearance that is our christian hope i can preach go on and go on but there is no much time so i am going to say and stop it and say a few words i have five sisters and all the three of them when to be with the lord to are in uh, in in ralas and in neo but all my nieces nephews are here and also my wife side everybody is here from new york and uh, around the country friends as she mentioned he is supposed to say send us the eternal home but we have to do for him he was so loving and a caring boy so sincere god fearing and concerned about everybody and he was concerned about us since i have some vip problem of qualities she call and check with him with me praise god when he was a small boy at the church he won't sit in a place ango chuti ayirikumbole orada thirike illa njan odi nadakku chelva body ekke edukandi vannattund to control him when he grew up now as you know he is a quiet calm friendly loving man 
About 18 years he moved to Dallas. He had so many friends in New York and in Dallas. A loving person, personal contact with uh, each and everyone. Three surgery, spine surgeries, he went through. He suffered a lot. But Veena, Ella Padum Avinodu Kuda Yundayirna Yella Milayum Sahai Cha Kondir. A caring wife and Jordan, his love, the only. We thank you, Bina and Jordan. May God comfort and console you. Betsy, Bensi, Jessina, and the children, especially in these days, you did a wonderful job. I thank you, and God comfort and bless you. Joy Chan and Lila Ma'am, you took care of them. When Jordan was a little babe, you were always there. You were always there, taking care of them as he was a son. But we are going to miss it. We thank you for you have done. Could you be and Rosie, you lost your brother. For us, we lost our firstborn. It is a great loss. all of our people around the world and here, your concern and love and care. Hundreds of people called and convey their condolences. I, I cannot, I, have no, I don't have time to mention, but I acknowledge you. My son Ben is in a better place. No sorrows, no pain, no tears, no worries. He is with Jesus, my Lord. There is a scripture here. Sagala jadavum pudubolim. Adindapangi alam. Ullinde Pupole Magun Ulla Wadi Pooder Nupoi Kartav in the Vajanamo Yem Nekum Nila Milk Kartavan Gimbir and other totem Prathana do and the Shabda totem, they were in the car of totem good as or got in the ring very game. Christopher. Mighty Chever, Moon Bay, we are third in El Kim Chayim. Pinajiva and order say shake in the nam, our road or remicher. Aga Shatil Kartav in Edre Pan make hung a little cupboardum. Yenanam Kartav in order good edicum. Ye was an angle like under. I knew Niam, I sure see picture good win. Ben. My son, boy, Vishramichurva, you go our son at Tingal, then they all hit the Prabhupada and the Yedinata Vedim, 
God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you to the heartwarming words. Let us continue to lift up the family in our prayers. I saw Bina's name on the program and, and I'm just blown away by the strength the Lord has given to her. And at this time, would you all stand as we invite Bina and their daughter Jordan to come and share a few words. Please be seated. Um, hi, my name is Jordan. My daddy would call me Kutapi. My dad is the best. He loves me. He spends time with me every day. He plays with me. He jokes around with me. And he told me many of his childhood stories that I will always remember. I remember a time when he bought me a remote-controlled car, and he bought one for himself so that he could play with me. My daddy always made me happy. Daddy would play music every day. He would play the music so loud that me, Zan, and Samar would have fun and have dance parties with him. I always looked forward to the time when daddy would come to pick me up from school. He would stop and get chicken nuggets or dinner on the way home. It was our special time together. And when we got home, my dad would help me with my homework. What I really enjoyed the most was the silly random songs that we made together. I love spending time with my dad. Daddy, I will always be your cut to be. I love you, Daddy. Good morning. My name is Bina Titus, the wife of Suresh Titus, also known as Ben Titus. In July of this year, Ben and I would have celebrated our 18th wedding anniversary. Ben had a heart of gold, and his goal and priority in life was to ensure that every single person that he had the opportunity to meet felt heard, felt loved, and appreciated, and felt taken care of, regardless of their situation or circumstance. I am confident that most of you would agree that in at least one moment of your connection with him, he was able to achieve that goal. I first spoke to Ben in August of 2003 through our mutual and longtime family friend and also my college roommate, Tina Mohan. Ben had told Tina that he was ready to settle down and get married, but he hadn't met the right person yet. Tina suggested to Ben that he and I talk and see if we might have any common interests, and at the time, Ben lived in New York and I lived in, here in Denton, and so meeting in person wasn't an immediate option. But he and I were both willing to chat over the phone and through email to see if there were any sparks, or at a minimum, to just gain a new friendship. Before we exchanged contact information, Ben had one very odd request. He asked that Tina describe who and what I was like without any pictures. He didn't want to concern himself with outward appearances and instead wanted to get to know me first on a deeper, more personal level, just through conversation. So Ben and I agreed to speak over the phone and emails and both decided that we weren't going to exchange pictures of each other, although he did offer. You'll have to recall that in 2003, we didn't have FaceTime, we didn't have Zoom or Google Meet, and we lived in two completely different states. So the first few months of our relationship, Ben and I spoke over email, phone, over AOLIM, without ever seeing a picture of each other or meeting face to face. By the time we finally exchanged pictures with each other over email, three months later, I can truly say that it was love at first sight for both of us, built on a foundation of mutual respect 
and understanding for each other that we had gained over time through our chats. By the first time we met in person in November of 2003, it felt like we had already known each other for our whole lives. He adored me, he made me feel worthy, and he called me beautiful. In our conversations, we found that we had some similarities that tied us together. Both born to Malayali parents that emigrated to the U.S. From, India's in, from India in the 70s, we were the eldest of three children. Our dads were both pastors of the local Malayali Christian Pentecostal church, and our moms were registered nurses. We both had a younger brother and a younger sister, and our siblings were very close in age. We both had a similar taste in contemporary Christian music, DC Talk, Jars of Clay, Amy Grant, LaRue, and according to our siblings, would listen to a particular song nonstop when we liked it. In fact, when we got married and combined our collection of CDs, we often had the exact same copies of the same thing. While we had similarities, we certainly had more differences. I was born and raised in Texas. He was born and raised in New York. I liked the taste of tea. He loved coffee. I preferred steak, but he enjoyed chicken. He ate his pancakes, waffles, and just about anything completely dry, but I needed sauce, syrup, ketchup, salad dressing, you name it, in order for anything to be worth eating. When it came to get together with friends or family, I was the quiet listener and observer, while Ben was engaging, personable, and a chatty host. He was very particular to detail where I was apt to gloss over things. Ben was rarely in a rush and took the time to enjoy the start to his morning while I was on the go from the moment I woke up. After a lively and heated discussion, I had the tendency to ignore the subject in question and potentially be bitter for a couple of days, whereas Ben was able to put the subject aside and move on within less than five minutes. This list of differences could go on and on, and Ben and I gave the phrase, opposites attract a new meaning. To know Ben was to know that you had a friend for life. He never met a stranger. You only had to meet once or twice, and then he would reach out some way to connect. The next time he saw you, he enveloped you in his bright, engaging smile and was always on the ready to give a big bear hug if you needed it. Family and friends meant the world to him. He reached out to people individually and was excellent at staying connected even if it was just to drop a quick text, a funny picture, a random joke, or just to plan the next meetup. He wanted to make sure others around him knew he was always ready to visit, to converse, and be available on a moment's notice to lend a helping hand. Yesterday and today, we heard that same message from every single person here. To know Ben was to know that he was going to share his lessons learned, his flaws, and his strengths if it meant he could help another person gain perspective or new meaning in their life. He spoke of many times in his past where he was melancholy or things got him down, and he was particularly aware of others that may be going through the same experience and would make it his goal to ensure that they weren't alone in their feelings and that they had someone available to talk to if they ever needed a listening ear. Ben wasn't shy in giving his opinions, but in everything, he inspired, he encouraged, and motivated others, speaking life directly into them. To know Ben was to be loved by Ben. He loved spending time with our youth group at our church. Whether through conversation, through playing basketball, whether hosting barbecues or mentoring them, he demonstrated his love for them through the big and little things. For his family, his one unwavering desire was to make sure that Jordan and I were happy and taken care of. The light of his life was his kutubi, his darling little Jordan, and he strived to teach her many things about life, love, family, and faith. He remembered birthdays and anniversaries and other special occasions and made sure to make us feel loved and celebrated. No matter how much I discouraged it, he would bring home gifts. He wouldn't wait for special occasions or milestones to celebrate. He never just bought one gift. He would buy multiple, individually wrap them, and we had to open them in a particular order. He was very specific about it. He also wanted us to experience new things and was always encouraging us to try new foods or experience new adventures. He recognized that Jordan and I disliked shopping, and so he was the one to often run out and buy us dresses or shoes and outfits and accessories for us to try on at home, especially right before a special occasion. 
and then he would exchange and return without complaint the ones we didn't want to keep. However, 99% of the time, the sizes were accurate, the style and fit were exactly to our liking, and they were exactly what we didn't know we needed. Ben was an outstanding brother to his siblings and to my siblings. He was an incredible and supportive son to both of our parents. He was an admired uncle to his adored nephew Zane and niece Samara. I was their aunt, aunt by blood, but he was their mobbin, or mobbin by love. His love had no bounds. As many of you know, Ben began dealing with back pain and associated neck, leg, and shoulder pains early on in our marriage. Most likely from years of wear and tear, going to work in the city, playing basketball, and so on and so forth. He was careful to never try and hide his pain, but instead strive to underscore his struggles by focusing on and helping others with their own challenges and modeling how he could continue to push through by relying on God and his faith. In hindsight, I can now see that although he was challenged physically, physically by his back, he emotionally, personally, and spiritually was the foundational backbone of our family. These 18 years have been a roller coaster of a ride, complete with its ups and downs, highs and lows, wins and losses, celebrations and mourning. Ben chose not only to take part in this journey of life wholeheartedly, but to ensure that everyone else riding along with us felt the same love, the same joy and appreciation he desired for himself. I want to take the opportunity right now to thank everyone for their overwhelming support and encouragement the prayers, the calls, the emails, the messages, the texts, the flowers, the food, all of it wasn't able to thank you enough, but every part of it continued to demonstrate the unending love and support that we received from our family and our friends in the time of our loss. While Jordan and I will grieve and mourn his loss in our life on this earth, we rejoice at the same time that Ben is now alive with Christ in heaven with no more physical pain or sorrows. Jordan, remember that your daddy was so proud of you and that you carry a piece of your, his heart in yours. He will always be watching over you. When there are times you wish you could see your daddy in person one more time, just remember that your daddy is watching over you and that your heavenly father will never leave you, never leave you or forsake you and that he is with you wherever you go. To Ben, Judge, I love you more than you know and miss you dearly. You loved us deeply and fiercely. You lived and loved without measure and you made us incredibly happy. Jordan and I will always love you. Rest easy, babe, till we meet again on that other shore. This time may I invite Pastor Libin Abraham, pastor of this church community, Bent Creek Bible Fellowship, to come and offer prayer. Friends and family of Ben Titus, uh, what a joy for our church here at Bentry to host our services last night and today. My name is Libin Abraham, and I get the joy of being lead pastor here, and it's been an honor to walk with you through this season. I know my wife, Stacey, and I, and both of our families, my dad, Pastor V.P. Abraham, and Pastor Linson, my brother, and Stacey's brother, Stephen, and our entire family, we're grieving with you and thinking about you in this season. I think one of the great temptations of life is that all of us get overly settled into this colony of foreigners, as Pastor mentioned. We get comfortable here. And days like last Monday get us a little less attached to this world. Tragedies like the loss of a loved one, wars and pandemics, it gets us untethered 
to this world and it creates a fresh longing for the world to come that we are all awaiting. I want to tell you, Bina and Jordan, that every single day that goes on from now, you are not growing distant from Ben, you are growing in proximity toward him. You are not getting further from him, you are actually getting closer. The bedrock of our hope and of our faith is that to be absent here is to be present with the Lord. Your husband, Jordan, your dad, has crossed the finish line before we have, and he's waiting for us there. So do not move on from him. You are moving on toward him, and we will see him. Let's pray. Almighty God, you are the God of comfort. You're the God of strength. You are great and you are good. You are mighty and yet you are merciful. You are resurrection and the life and still you stand at the door of our pain and loss and you weep with us. So we thank you that we are invited to trust you in moments like this when we don't fully understand. That we're not asked to evade and remove our grief and brokenness and pain but yet offer all of those things openly, honestly, and freely into your hands as you weave together the tapestry of comfort and grace that can only come from you. So we ask once again that you would baptize this room and all of those joining us online with a spirit of comfort, strength, and a perspective that can only come from you, a perspective that is driven, motivated, inspired by eternity by the very place where Ben is, by the idea that to be gone from here is to arrive elsewhere, right into the presence of Jesus. That is home. That is the world we were designed and created for. So Father, allow us to live the rest of our days with that moment in mind. And in the between time, we thank you that we are not moving on from our friend, husband, brother, son, we are moving toward him as we will join him. So Father, we pray for those who are grieving and we pray for the rest of this service. Now as we open up your word, will you comfort, will you strengthen, will you give us life in a fresh way through the power of your word? Holy Spirit, may we be gripped by hope, beyond understanding, beyond reason, gripped by the power of hope that comes through your spirit. Be with Pastor Linson, Daniel, as he now shares your word that gives us strength and comfort in moments like this. We thank you, we love you, we trust you, even when we can understand. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. As Pastor Abraham prayed, it is now time for us to open our hearts to look into God's Word, the living Word of God. And for that, we'd like to invite Pastor Linson Daniel to come and share. Praise the Lord. Ben was a man of worship. He would be, in moments alone, he would spend time in worship. He's a spirit-filled man. So one way that we could honor him as Pentecostal believers is can we open up our mouth and give God glory and honor right now. Father, we worship you. We say truths even with sorrow in our heart. You are a faithful God. You are a God that is in control and we worship you. Holy Spirit, we invite your presence. As spirit-filled believers, we turn to you now. Amen. Dear family and friends, esteemed pastors, it is an honor to stand before you. Pastor K.P. Titus, Pastor Daniel K. George and family, Bina and Jordan, I offer our deepest condolences from my family, my father, Pastor Thomas Daniel, my mother, Lilikurti, my brother, and family, my wife and my children. We express our deepest condolences to you all. 
I express the deep concern and sympathy from the church I help pastor, Metro Church of God, also from our senior pastor, Pastor Sadish Kumar. Dear family, thank you for entrusting me to speak from the scripture this morning, especially during a difficult time. During times of difficulty, we must turn to the timeless truths found in God's scripture. We have to be able to say, God is in control, amen. We must be able to say that God is good, even with sorrow in our heart, amen. We turn to the God of all comfort and hope during this time. If you would, turn your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27 through 28, two short scriptures. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27 through 28. As you open or turn on your Bibles, I have a quick story to tell you. I was invited to this wedding. It was quite some time, and I remember I had to go by myself. My, my wife, Bettina, was working, and my kids were with my parents. It was almost like I was a bachelor again, attending a wedding. So anyway, the ceremony was over, and I was headed to the hotel. And you know how it is when you mo mo go into the reception, you're a little disoriented. You're trying to get your bearings. And at that moment, my, I could feel uh, a buzzing in my jacket, and I looked. It was my phone was ringing. I grabbed my phone, and I looked at it, and it said, Ben Titus. I was like, oh, man, why is Ben calling me right now? And I thought, you know what? I'll probably find him somewhere in the wedding, in the ballroom. And so I silenced the phone. Big mistake. From behind me, I heard a big voice. Oh, so it's like that now. And I turned around, and I knew that voice. And there, standing there in his Sunday best, looking as handsome as ever, smiling sarcastically from ear to ear, it was Ben. He blusters forward his displeasure in me. You know, with all that New York bravado, half the words, I wasn't quite sure what he was saying because of his accent. And he kept saying, hey, listen, do I call you often? I was like, no, no, sir, no, Apachin, I mean, uh, uh, Chachin, uh, so when I call you, you should answer, right? Yes, sir, yes, sir, Chachin, yes, I, I will answer. If I call you, it's for a good reason. Yes, yes, sir. So then I asked him, so what's the good reason? He's like, oh, nothing, I just saw you. And there we walked together, I saw Bina up ahead, and we walked into the ballroom, there's all these people there. Ben smiled, and we smiled at each other, two social butterflies, ready to get to work. Man, I wish my phone would just ring one more time and it would say Ben Titus because I have some important things to say to him. But instead, I eagerly wait to walk into a different kind of ballroom, a bigger wedding reception than we will ever see in the age to come. My hope is that we would find our loved ones like Ben helping us guide, a, guide us into a family reunion of a lifetime to bring us into the wedding of all weddings in the kingdom to come. We love you, my brother. Hebrews 9 states this in verse 27. People are appointed. They are destined to die once. And after that, we will face judgment. But Christ has died once and has taken away the sin of many. And he will appear a second time, not to bear sin, but to bring our salvation. So we eagerly wait for him. These two verses sum up everything that we are feeling right now. We, as Christian believers, are held between attention this morning. On one hand, we are experiencing the reality of death. But on the other hand, we're experiencing the hope of eternity that is to come. These two ideas stand as pillars in front of us, and they are held in tension. It is almost felt tangibly during a funeral. We need both reality and hope. You see, without hope, the reality of death would settle upon us with great despair. But without reality, the hope for eternity feels lofty and untethered like a dream that will never come. We need both reality and hope as Christian believers because there's a tension in between. What is that tension? That tension has a name. It is called faith. Faith is the is the tension between right now and when we once get there. The faith is what is and what is to come. Faith stands as the hope between the reality of death and the hope of eternity. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things that we cannot see. Let me unpack this a little bit further. The reality of death, 
the scripture states right from the beginning with incredible clarity, brevity, honesty, that we are all appointed a season to die. There may, this is the principle that defines our reality. This is what makes us human, that we are appointed to die. This phrase, when I say it, feels natural and completely unnatural. Natural in the sense that we see death every day. The flowers fade, the grass withers. We see death every day. We see it in the news. Those that work in the medical arena, you have seen people pass away. Death is the natural order of things, yes. But if I am honest, I confess this to you this morning, even as a pastor, when the tragic demise of a beloved one happens, natural is the last word I would ever use to describe death. It feels unnatural. For a moment, when I heard that Ben had passed, anger burned inside of me. I felt like we were robbed. Philosophical and emotional questions began to plague us when we hear this kind of news. How can you love someone so deeply and then not have them with us? It is unnatural. Deep inside of us, we feel like we should be family forever. We should be in relationship forever. It feels unnatural for someone to leave us. One of the phrases I heard all week, both in the hospital and at Bina's home, this is surreal. This isn't supposed to happen. My cousins and my friends would say the, the pain feels so deep. The hurt is just too much. Somewhere in our pain and our loss of relationship, Somewhere in that feeling, that unnatural feeling, there's a, there's a clue there. And for those of you who know, that clue has been put into our hearts by God himself, that we are meant for more than this. God has placed eternity in each of our hearts. We know that death is not the end, that there is an eternity waiting for us where we will continue to be in relationship with one another and with God most high. Reality is but, of death is but one part of the tension. The other thing this morning that we are all holding on to is the hope of eternity. The text said that Jesus has died once for our sins, and he is not coming back to judge us again. Those For those of us who believe, we are going to be saved. Saved from what? Death itself, Jesus has overcome. Death itself, we have been rescued from the clutches of death, and we eagerly await his return. The good news, friends, is we are saved, saved from death. Jesus is our future, our blessed hope, our blessed assurance. Friends, I have often pondered eternity. Many of you are probably thinking about it now. What will eternity be like? I often think that it might be kind of like our Indian wedding receptions. We'll be united with all our loved ones. We will see everyone. Everyone will be asking you that question. Do you know who I am? You know, Do you know who I am? Ben is probably doing that right now. When I look at all of you here, all of the friends, Ben would love this gathering. New York and Dallas and everywhere in between. Cousins, friends, family, all spending time together, making time to deepen friendships. This would be his element. He's the best host. If you've ever been around him, the best conversationalist. So it makes sense to me, logically, that if God is going to throw the best celebration ever, he takes the best host first. Why am I talking like this? Because we have a hope that Jesus is alive, Ben is alive, and we are going to be with both very soon. So as I conclude, here's the thing, family and friends. We've talked about the reality of death and the hope of eternity, but we are in the middle. We have to manage the tension that we are in, the middle. And the middle is faith. One of the best things I know how to express faith is in worship. Worship is the ultimate expression of mankind. But here's the incredible contrast. You would never think you would hear worship at a funeral. That's what makes us so different from the world around us. You see, as faithful believers in Jesus, even with sorrow in our heart, we worship. Even with tears, even with heartache, we look to heaven and we worship. We don't deny the realities that are around us, but we still worship. On Ben and Bina's wedding day, Ben gave a short speech. I'm paraphrasing. 
He said something like this, A, I don't sing or play any instruments really. Bina does all that. She's amazing at it. But I promise that I will help her worship if that means carrying around her piano or her gear. I will carry it everywhere she goes to lead worship. Because worship. that's what we do. We worship. He said something humorous like none of you guys want to hear me sing or play the piano. But I will worship alongside my wife. So from that day to today and until that future wedding day, we will worship God. Let's step up together, church. Let's stand in the tension that we feel, in that faith that we express. Let's help our beloved Bina. Let's help Jordan. Let's help this incredible extended family of faith. They have such generational faith built into them. Let's rally around them and support them in one spiritual way that no one else can provide. We will surround them with the sound of worship. Even with sorrow in our hearts and tears in our eyes, we worship because Ben will be the first to tell you right now what we believe in faith, he sees with his eyes that we indeed serve a faithful God from generation to generation. Ben sees what we only believe that God keeps his promises and he is faithful to save us from the clutches of death. Ben sees that what we only believe that Jesus stands on the other shore to, to greet you face to face, church. I know it is mind boggling and puzzling for us to worship and grieve at the same time, but it is what makes us distinct from the world around us. We live in the tension of faith. We can boldly say, Bina, we can boldly say with hope that God is good. God is in control. Ben, my brother, I hope you and Jesus are locked in one of your intense conversations. I hope you're getting everything ready for the biggest family reunion ever, because we can't wait to join you. Until then, family, we stand between reality and hope in an unshakable faith. Amen. Pastor Daniel mentioned the grandest of all ballrooms await of the greatest banquet of all when Jesus the bridegroom will gather his church and Ben will be in that congregation so good thank you Ben was a good man I too played some basketball with him. As I remember his life, he was also a godly man. I wanted to share with you, when I think of him, as a godly man, he submitted to the authority of Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. His name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. As a godly man, he loved and adored his wife as Christ loves the church. As a godly man, he led his family as the spiritual head of his household. Ben did all of these things really, really well. He loved God and served him well. He loved his wife and served her and his daughter well. He loved his family and served them well. In his letter to the church, John the Apostle writes in the book of 1 John chapter 4. It says, Love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God. And whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. What a wonderful example right here in our dear friend and brother, Ben. His life was short, but he lived them well. His infectious smile, exuding joy for life, fun, thoughtful, humble, generous characteristics. And as we bring this service to a close, what do we take away? 
We take away that our God is still God. Our God sympathizes with us in our moments of weakness and empathizes with us in our moments of suffering. And he walks in our valleys. We go from here remembering our dearest Ben, Suresh Titus. His love for God, his love for people, how he craved and created connections, valued relationships, proactively stayed in touch with so many, gave many gifts. His intentionality, his love for basketball, and how he made a mark with everyone he met. Dear Ben, well done. Thou good and faithful servant, enter the rest your master has prepared for you. To those who are listening to us tonight, here in person or via live stream, may I say to you today that because of Jesus, we have greater hope ahead. In the book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 18, Jesus made it very clear who is in charge? He said, and I quote, I am the living one. I was dead and then look, I am alive forevermore. And I hold the keys of death and Hades in my hand. Friends and family, if you're here and you do not know this Jesus, if you do not have had the joy of putting your faith and trust in him on this day, May I invite you to give your heart to him. He is in charge. And one of these days, the trumpet will sound. And those who are dead in Christ shall resurrect from the dead. And with them, our dear brother Ben will come. And he will join with all those from all over the world, tribe, kindred, and language. And we who are alive shall be transformed in the twinkling of an eye. And that day is fast approaching. May I invite you to prepare yourself for that beautiful day. At this time, I'd like to invite you to bow your heads for a word of prayer. As we invite Pastor K.O. Johnson to come forward, pray, and offer benediction. Following that, we will have announcements from Timothy Thomas. If you've yet had a chance to view the body, Know that there is a final viewing coming forward. Pastor K.O. Johnson. Before I pray, I would like to take a moment. I thank and praise God for this time. We never planned for it, but God planned for it. God's presence is here. God's peace is here. We, I praise God for his presence, the peace that beyond our understanding is filled in this sanctuary. The hearts of the family, the parents, the siblings, the believers. I thank and praise God for that. I would like to take a moment to uh, convey some of the condolences from our dear ones. Especially when we talk about Pastor K.P. Titus, he has been, as of God, a great leader for us in the past, as him and his family. On behalf of Assemblies of God, we convey our prayers and hope with you. And also, Joy Pastor and family, they've been ministering in this city. I congratulate them, and uh, we convey our prayers to him also. Especially, I will bring hope and prayers from Kunyama Matai, Pidavur, their children, Babuji, Reji, and Gigi. Pastor Daniel P. Tangachan and Kunyamama from Oklahoma. Brother Babu, Matthew, and family. Brother C.I. Matthew and family. Pastor V.K. Sunny and family. Pastor Joe Stephenson from Chicago. We, our prayers are with you. God may give you peace. Let's pray. Would you please stand with me, those who can stand. We are here, gathered here to pray 
for the peace and comfort of the dear ones, the family, Sister Bina, daughter Jordan. Would you please open your mouth for a second? Let them be filled with the God's presence, God's peace, not just for now, but going forward every moment of their life. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this given time. We thank you for the life that you have given to our dear Ben. Lord, you gave him the opportunity to believe in you and become a true child of God. Lord, you helped, me, helped him to be a living witness for you, a true Christian, a true model for us, O oh Lord. We thank you for the life that you've given to him. Lord, we thank you for taking him to the place which he was hoping for and praying for and looking forward. A place where there is no pain, no sickness, no sorrow. And a place of rejoicing where filled with your presence. We thank you, O oh Lord. Even, even though our dear Ben rejoicing in your presence, Lord, his dear ones, we are here very saddened and trusting in you for your comfort and peace. Oh, we are all together, Lord, uphold Sister Bina and Jordan to your hands and also their parents and siblings the dear ones Lord comfort them Lord give them peace the peace the heavenly peace the divine peace that goes beyond our understanding Lord our dear ones are watching from all over the world comfort them give them peace Comfort everyone who are gathered here in this sanctuary, O oh Lord. We thank you for the churches. Thank you for the ministers who ministered yesterday and today. Lord, we thank you. We ask you to continue to bless us with your presence and also strengthen your servants to continue the service. Lord, when we go from here to the cemetery, Lord, be with us. Lord, honor with your presence the service at the cemetery also. Let your name be glorified, O oh Lord Jesus. We give you all the glory and honor to you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Now, may the grace of God grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of our Heavenly Father, and the continued, continued fellowship and comfort of the Holy Spirit be, be with us, everyone, especially Bina, Jordan, parents, and siblings, now and forever and ever. Amen. Be seated, please. കടന്നു വന്ന എല്ലാവർക്കും ലോകത്തിൻ്റെ പല ഭാഗത്തു നിന്നും ലൈഫ് സ്ട്രീമിൽ കൂടെ ജോയിൻ ചെയ്യുന്ന എല്ലാവർക്കും ഞാൻ ഫാമിലിയുടെ ബിഹാഫിൽ ഹൃദയം നിറഞ്ഞ് നന്ദി അറിയിക്കുന്നു നിങ്ങളുടെ എല്ലാ സ്നേഹത്തിനും ആത്മാർത്ഥയ്ക്കും സപ്പോർട്ടിനും അവർ നന്ദി അറിയിക്കുന്നു ദൈവം നിങ്ങളെ അനുഗ്രഹിക്കട്ടെ ഓൺ ബിഹാഫ് ഓഫ് ദ ഫാമിലി ഐ വോണ്ട് ടു താങ്ക് എവറിബഡി ദാറ്റ്സ് ഹിയർ And for all those that are joining us through the live stream from different parts of the world, uh, I want to offer um, sincere thanks and gratitude on behalf of the family. Um, also for those who traveled from out of town to be here, thank you. Um, also, um, the family has also asked me to um, uh, say thank you for all those that reached out by text. phone calls that they were not able to attend 
They're deeply sorry that they were not able to respond to you, but they've definitely felt your love and your gratitude. Um, I want to also take this time to say thank you to a few important people uh, that uh, played a key part and contributed. First of all, thank you to uh, the pastors, family and friends who participated in this service. Thank you for, uh, for everything that you contributed. Um, once again, we also want to thank family and friends that came from out of town. We certainly appreciate you making the effort to come out here and uh, very thankful for that. Uh, we also want to thank uh, Bentry Bible Fellowship for allowing us to use this beautiful church. I want to especially thank you, Pastor Libin, uh, for giving us the opportunity to do that. Um, also, the Bentry uh, staff, Karen, you've been amazing, uh, so thank you. Um, Jeff, Terry, and Michael, thank you all for, for your support. Uh, it's been hugely helpful. I also want to thank uh, Merritt Memorial. I know Brian's somewhere here, Brian and his team. Thank you so much, Brian. You've been very kind, and I know uh, the family has been uh, very appreciative of how you've, you've dealt with us. So thank you very much. We also want to say thank you to the uh, Rolling Oaks Memorial Center that we'll all go to. I'll have a few announcements for that. Uh, I want to say thank you to Prasad and Sharon, uh, the ProVision team, uh, who is uh, who's doing the live stream. Thank you very much. Um, I want to say thank you to a few churches. Um, uh, IPA India Pentecostal Assembly, thank you for your love and support. Uh, I also want to say thank you to New York Bible Assembly of God from New York. Thank you all for your love and support. Um, lastly, I want to say thank you to Freedom Church here in Carrollton, Texas. Thank you to the pastor, um, and thank you to the members. Uh, thank you to the worship team. Thank you, L.A. Struthers and your team for being here. Um, lastly, the support team and all the ushers. I know you guys stepped up and uh, just, just sort of contributed uh, uh, willingly. So thank you so much for that. Um, I have two uh, main announcements. I'm going to say this in English and Malayalam so we can make sure that everyone is able to understand. Um, so uh, we've made some arrangements for uh, what's ha going to happen next after we're done. We're going to do the viewing next, uh, but we have a funeral procession, uh, and the funeral procession, in order for it to be in a, in a, in a timely and safe way, um, it is going to be on your left side, the parking lot that's against Marsh Lane. Um, so if you parked over here, we gave some instructions last night, um, you have the uh, opportunity to be able to join the funeral procession uh, if you like. Um, family members have been given decals with Mer Merit Memorial on it. I haven't seen anyone park behind the bus yet, but if you have been given a Merit Memorial decal or a little sticker, uh, I would want to give you the opportunity first to come and park behind the bus. There's the hearse, and there's a there's a, a black, dark-colored bus. So go ahead and pull behind. This is for everyone that has a sticker, right? And everyone else that's parked on the Marsh Lane side, uh, there will be escorts, and you can slowly make your way out as the escorts, uh, the police escorts, uh, direct you. Um, so if you are parked by any chance on the Marsh Lane side and you're not going to be part of the funeral procession, uh, I, I would request you to be, please be considerate. Either just, just stay in your cars and let the procession leave um, so that it's not disruptive. Uh, for those who are parked on the International Parkway side, um, uh, you know, you, you're, you're free to leave. Uh, if you want to be part of the funeral procession, I would advise you not to come around and make your way over here. Uh, it just, just brings a lot of disruption. Um, so thank you for your understanding. Uh, I'm also going to say that in Malayalam. Uh, uh, funeral procession join chain 
വണ്ടിക്കാത്തിരിക്കണം ഫ്യൂണൽ പ്രൊസഷൻ പോയി കഴിഞ്ഞ് മാത്രമേ നിങ്ങൾ വണ്ടി എടുക്കാവൂ അതുകൊണ്ട് അവർക്ക് ഒരു ബുദ്ധിമുട്ടില്ലാതെ ചെയ്യാൻ വരുന്ന രീതിയിൽ ഈ സൈഡിൽ പാർക്ക് ചെയ്തെങ്കിൽ നിങ്ങൾക്ക് യുവർ 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 ഫ്രീ ഇരിക്കാവും ഓൾസോ ദ ഫാമിലി ഹാസ് ആസ്ക് മീ ടു റിമൈൻഡ് ഫാമിലി ആൻഡ് ഔട്ട് ഓഫ് ടൗൺ ഗ്യാസ് ദാറ്റ് വി വിൽ ഹാവ് എ ലഞ്ച് ഹിയർ ആഫ്റ്റർ ദ ദ ബറിയൽ Uh, so want to remind you for family and out of town friends uh, to come here back to the church uh, there's a hallway right across uh, and we'll have signs here so when you come here we'll have signs to show you there's a couple of rooms that we'll be serving lunch um, that's the first announcements if you have any questions on any of this please feel free to uh, flag down an usher and we'll make sure to clarify with you Okay, next we are going to go into the final viewing. So we're going to give everybody an opportunity to be to partake in the viewing. Um a couple of things to uh, as a reminder, if you were here earlier, you probably heard the instructions, but I'm going to say it one more time. Uh don't leave your seat until a merit memorial usher comes and directs you to do so. We're going to do that so that we can do everything in a very orderly fashion and and since we are on a time crunch we want to make sure that uh we move things along. Um so Brian, Brian if you want to raise your hand, Brian is going to lead the 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 first folks that are going to make their way from the left side or my left side, your right side all the way across and then all the way to the end and out the door, okay? So keep in mind grab your things because we're not going to be coming back to our seats uh, as you view the body and we want you to make sure that you exit out okay the only people that are going to stay back is parents and siblings um, and I'm going to ask the pole bearers to stay back as well for pole bearers once uh, things clear out if you don't mind if I can have you move back to the soundboard where Brian will come and join you and give you instructions um I'll, I'll attempt to say that in Malayalam as well. Um uh if I'm viewing all the time ana ningal um ushers varumbe ningal seat il nikkao ellarkum view cheyan all the time kittum view cheyidu kanju nammal exit cheyan povana adonde ningalku saanangal undengil please take it with you ee side il nanu view cheyna view cheyidu kanju edathe side il kudi poi nammal exit cheyan povana veli chennu kanjumbam അധികം ആരും അത്ര കൂടുതൽ സമയം ലോബിൽ ചിലവാക്കരുത് നമുക്ക് പിന്നെയും ആക്ടിവിറ്റീസ് ഉണ്ട് അതുകൊണ്ട് നിങ്ങളത് കൺസിഡർ ചെയ്യ ചെയ്യണമെന്ന് ഞാൻ അപേക്ഷിക്കുന്നു തിങ്ക് ഐ കവേഡ് ഓൾ ദി അനൗൺസ്മെൻറ്റ്സ് ഓക്കെ വൾ ഐ വോണ്ട് താങ്ക് യു വൺസ് അഗൈൻ ഐ അപ്രീഷിയേറ്റ് ഓൾ ഓഫ് യു ഐ നോ ദ ഫാമിലി ഡസ് ആൻഡ് ഐ വോണ്ട് എക്സ്പ്രസ് ദ ഫാമിലീസ് ഗ്രാറ്റിറ്റ്യൂഡ് ആൻഡ് താങ്ക് യു ഫോർ യുവർ സപ്പോർട്ട് Um, I will turn it over to Ellie. Thank you.
he is going to be coming back to this earth one day. Second point that I want to make is that in here, on the 15th verses, he says, For this we say to you, by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Second, he is not going to be coming alone. He is going to be coming with the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, with the archangel, with the trumpet of the Lord, with the dynamic power, he is coming. He is coming and he is honored. And I don't believe it's just him. All the saints who died before us in Christ, they will be returning with Jesus Christ. What a day it will be when Jesus Christ comes back here. And all the saints, that includes Benji. The third thing that I want to make here today, it is going to be a triumphal return. Because when he comes, when he comes, amazing things will happen. All these cemeteries, it doesn't matter how much of a slab, strong slab that they have. They have to open. And then, immediately from every one of these graves, if they are buried in Lord Jesus Christ, if they have accepted Jesus Christ and the pastor, personal Savior and obeyed the commandment, and they all will be resurrected from the cemeteries. So this burial is very important because there is a day that this grave will be opened. That is the day when Jesus Christ returns and then Jesus Spirit returns. Amen. Hallelujah. So I pray today that all of us will have that privilege eh, to be caught up, not to be left behind. So we have heard so much of invitation today, but there's no need to invite anyone to accept Jesus Christ today because I believe all of you who are here, you are prepared and you're living a worldly life and to be caught up with them. What an honor and privilege that we have and to be included in that group. Hallelujah. We are going to prayerfully bury the body of our dear brother Benji today. So before that, I'm going to ask some of the pastors who is assigned to read the scripture, kindly read those scriptures. Reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 20 to 26. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. But each in turn, Christ the first fruits, then when he comes, those who belong to him. Then the end will come, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he has destroyed all dominion, authority and power, for he must reign, and he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 15, verses 50 to 58. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the corruption inherit the incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised the incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on the incorruption, and the mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on the incorruption, and this mortal has put on immorality, immortality, then uh, shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of the sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always bounding 
uh, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Reading from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 13 to 18. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For, for the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds. So to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Amen. The Lord's comfort was showered upon his family for some time now, but was excruciating as of this Monday. The agony went up, the pain, the sorrow. But we know one thing, these are natural. Sorrow is natural, pain is natural, separation, anxiety is natural. All these things, even sometimes guilt, fear of tomorrow, these are all natural. But there is one thing that we can hope for, that is supernatural. Supernatural is the grace. All these things I just mentioned is natural and human. But there is something that we can hope for. That is divine. That is supernatural. The peace that comes from above cannot be given by any human beings. God may use us and to offer that as a channel, but it originates from God. So I pray as we are here, we are extending our, uh, 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 our heartfelt uh, uh, so, uh, uh, agreement with this family that saying this day is not the last day we will be interceding for you. This day is not the last day we will be praying for you. We will be continuing to pray for you that God will give you a supernatural covering of his grace, his peace and I pray there is going to be a healing process that is going to be given to all of you today. Amen. So these natural things, we have to handle it, although it's painful. But let's look forward for a supernatural thing. That is the comfort. That is the courage that we get. I just had a brother who comes to our church. Because of COVID, he passed away. He was only 46 years old. And his wife have told us that she felt so guilty. She felt so shame, so fearful, and she did not want to face the people after the burial. But then when she was laying down on that sofa and asking God, why God, I don't have answer, just like what she maybe said today. But I just want to say that to that sister, the Spirit of God came upon her. And God gave her a verse from the Bible saying that I am your father, I will never leave you. So I pray today that each and every one of you will find a scripture, find a vision, find a dream, find a message, find a song where God will communicate to you and say, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will replace everything that you have lost and I will carry you in the palms of my arms. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I release the grace of God upon you, hallelujah. Although it's painful, now it's time for us to say faith and to our dear brother Benji. May I tell you something? This is very important. I believe the triune God is watching us today. His divine presence is here today. Do you know why? Because to him, precious is in his sight the death of his saints. Hallelujah. So for him, it is precious. 
That's why he himself came down into to do the burial of Moses. Because Moses served him faithfully. God wanted to honor him in his burial. So I say to you, as where are the brothers? As the brothers is offering this coffin today, we have sadness. We have to say it. But I say this to you, Benji. Your soulless, your spiritless body that you have here is taken from the dust through your ancestor Adam. So now, even if we want to, we cannot hold you anymore. So, bones of Benji return to dust. Flesh of Benji return to dust. Now we commit you into this dust just for a rest. But we know there is a day coming when the roll is called upon you. This grave will be pushed open and you will come out and you will hear the voice of the one who is calling. So Suresh, good and faithful son, God, you are eternal abode. We sent you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, into the name of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Let us just close our eyes and say a bit to our brother right now. The remaining thing is only his body, his soul, and his spirit reach destiny already and reach the destination already. Heavenly Father, we bring glory to you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your miraculous way of conducting every aspect of our lives, oh God. Father, Suresh lived a healthy life. Suresh lived a prosperous life. Suresh lived a spiritual life. Suresh lived a happy life. And he's not ending his life here because you have given him an eternal life, an everlasting life. So he is having the face too in another location, oh God. So as we heard through the message today, it is our desire to go and see him one day, oh God. More than that, we are expecting to see you. That is our hope of glory, oh God. Father, in your precious holy name, we, as we send the remaining of Suresh Titus, we pray for comfort of Titus the child, Remini Mama, yes, for Bina and Jordan, oh God, and for Daniel Pastor, and to Lila Mom and the Lord Jesus and the siblings and the children, everyone here, oh God, all the family members, oh God, all the friends. And I pray today, as his body is leaving us, your spirit will stay with us, oh God. You will comfort us, oh God. Thank you, Pastor, for your precious and holy name. We release the body of Suresh Titus to the earth. We pray this in the name of the Father, name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm reading a final scripture from Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 through 5, please. Revelation 21, verses 1 through 5. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city. New Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, no sorrow, no crying, there shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Amen. Hallelujah. I ask Pastor to come and pray. Can I have some questions?
as flowers are given. You can come now and extend your final homage. And also there is some uh, sand here. If you want to use the sand, you can and return the body of our dear Suresh with your participation. From dust, you are taken. From ashes, you are taken. We now commit you back to the dust, to the ashes. Go and return until the day Lord Jesus Christ comes. Rest your body here and wait for that calling to be resurrected. <laughs> Amen. If anybody wants to put them. <laughs>
Thank mm-hmm. you.